We are back with another episode of Locked In. I'm your host, Ian Bick, and on today's episode, we have Devin Riley coming from New Jersey to tell his insane and crazy story about how he was the head of a drug and gambling ring that ends up getting shut down by multiple law enforcement officials, including federal agents, and lands him in 20 years of prison. Guys, this story is so crazy. It might be one of the most wild stories we had on, and I'm super excited to share it with you. Thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for all the love and support you've been giving us as our channel continues to grow. Please do us a favor. Check out the audio streaming platforms, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts, and leave us a review. It helps us boost the show drastically. Also, today I was looking through my Facebook and a memory came up from a year ago, the first ever video I posted talking about my story. And it's just insane how much this has grown from just in a year's time. You know, the power of being consistent and never giving up can really take you places that you've never imagined. Thank you guys for all of you that have been along with us on this journey as we continue to grow and continue to build. I'm so excited for you know the next six months because these past six months have been absolutely amazing. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my interview with Devin Riley. Devin Riley, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, thank you, you. you hit me up on what, what platform? Instagram or Facebook or something? I don't remember. I think One it was Facebook, and you sent me the article, and I knew it was going to be a crazy story just by that the, the photo of you in court. Oh, with my thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like waving to the court <laughs> Like, I'm good. Yeah. It's so cool that they got that, because this was going back to early 2000s, yep. uh, that they got that photo. That's literally an iconic photo. It's all, Listen, I play softball around the country. My buddy Mooch... He, every time we join a new team or something, that's the, that's what the the group chat picture is. Might be with a thumbs up. But listen, I want to tell everybody I'll be fine. Like I take care of everybody. Don't worry about me in here. I'm a, I'll be home. You know. So that's what it was. Yeah, and and then you sent me some stuff last week, and I'm going through and listening to the recordings. I'm like, wow, this dude's story is insane. Who, like, get, who gets inside? The, who gets the video from inside the court? But me, you know. I know. I think you're the first guest that we got inside, like yeah. uh, court, like uh, listenings the, to the whole, yeah, the whole videos. I know, mm -hmm. insane. All right, so let's dive into this. Starting from your childhood, where did you grow up? Where are you from? So originally from Millville, New Jersey. Um, about 14, my mother moved to Philadelphia, so I was back and forth between Philadelphia and New Jersey with my father. You know, after the divorce. My mother's husband is originally from Philadelphia. Great dude, like my real dad, almost. You know, my father's more like my friend. I was a good kid. I was a good kid. I, so in, I, what I could do was I manipulated the system, though. My mother, who's being out of Philadelphia, I got my driver's license a year early. So in New Jersey, you're 17. Pennsylvania, you're 16. So I got a car. So <clears throat> I had worked. My grandfather uh, owned a oil and ice company. They sold ice and oil, fuel oil. So, I mean, I was in fifth grade, he's picking up taking me to work. So my work ethic is insane. And they made a deal with me. Listen, you don't do drugs, we'll buy you a car. So I didn't do any drugs my whole 16 years. My grandfather got sick on my 17th birthday, he died. He called January 1st, my birthday. My mom calls me like, you better go see your grandpa. Like, All right, you know, but he was only sick a month. He tells me he loves me, he dies right there in front of me. Well, from that day on, that's when I went bad. That was the trigger. That was it. Yeah. You, that and the Ice-T video, Hustler. I, I, you're watching this video. I'm like, that's what I want. I don't know if you've ever seen the video. I can't find it ever again. But it had all, you know, all the strippers riding around, you know, the gold chains back then. So that, and that's what started it. I had the connections in Philly. I knew guys there. Then my grandfather was gone now because he was everything, like my best friend. Fuck it, let's see what happens. Well, first off, it's awesome your birthday is January 1st. Like, that's a, such a great <laughs> birthday. Like, every year you got a fresh new year. Yeah, but it sucks because, listen, growing up, they were broke. So after Christmas, my birthday, I would get nothing. You know, not a lot of gifts because, you know, everybody spent a lot of money on Christmas time. Yeah. But the, the day is a very good one. So even though um, that your grandfather or uncle or grandfather, grandfather was grandfather had a business, you guys still grew up kind of poor or middle class? Yeah, so no, my mother, uh, you know, they, they were old school. So what theirs was theirs. They didn't make a ton of money with the company. Um, they lived well. 
for them. You know, they drove to Lincoln. They had the little house. They didn't, it's not like money now. So when he died, he went out $30,000, you know. Um, now we spend that a day in Vegas. So, you know, money's just totally different now. My mother, she was, uh, my father was an attorney. Rough divorce. He didn't pay her. You know, you know how that works. So my mother worked at like the Red Cross for $7 an hour. So I was selling newspapers, you know, with a newspaper. I was the first, I bought a VCR for our house. You know, I was that kid. Um, so I just made my own money all the time. You know, in, when I was in sixth grade, I would stop at the, I'd walk by the bakery and buy day old pies for a dollar. And I'd take them to school and sell them for a dollar a slice. That's smart. So, you know, that, that's just where I, it started way back then, you know, between hustle and baseball cards. And I'd find out which ones are worth the most. You know, they didn't have the internet back then. So I'm going in the bookstore, like trying to sleep through things who I can get for the baseball cards. Yeah, you know what's cool? Like all these entrepreneurs and stuff say they have some type of mentality as, as a child. Like in my childhood, I'd get dropped off at CVS in the morning next to the middle school. I'd get 20 bucks for my dad and I'd mm. go buy energy drinks, gum, whatever. And I'm double or tripling it. Every, that's what I did every day. Lemonade Polaroid stands, pictures. Yep. Yeah, lemonade stands, candy, whatever. Like. Yeah. If you have it that young, you're gonna do it later on. And I didn't realize that at the time, but it, it, it's insane. I knew I just didn't want to be like my mom. So we were sleeping in two bedroom, my sister and I were, and my mom was sleeping on the couch. You know, I didn't want to ever be that. Um, you know, my father being an attorney, he had all the women, been married five times. He was out doing whatever he did. So he wasn't around much as, as I was a kid. So I just knew I didn't want to end up like my mom, you know? And your only sibling is your sister. Yes. Yep. And um, growing up, what was that like? Like sports or what, so, what did you do? I, I, I was a bit, I played baseball growing up. Uh, my sister's four years younger. So we, you know, we didn't get along at all for growing up. She lived with my mother when she moved back to Philly. I stayed with my father. Um, I did shot put for track. Like, you know, I, I would listen. I was worried about making money. That's it. I mean, that, that was my thing. You know, like I said, I had paper route. I worked in my grandfather's business, you know, so. Saturdays I was working, 4th of July, they want to go and party. Well, that was the biggest day in the ice business. They would have, you know, they'd sell $30,000 worth of ice off the back of the, the deck, you know, 25 pound crushing machine. I wanted to go to work. I didn't want to be at the beach with my dad. You know, so I've always been that motivated just to work, you know, more than partying and hanging out. I don't drink, I never drank. I drank in college last time I drank. And what were your like aspirations at that age? What do you want to do with your life? You know, I, I really just thought the ice plant, that business would be mine. So my mother's brother, though, who um, worked there his whole life too, not a not a super intelligent fella, you know, but he had a problem with me because I was young, ambitious, wanted ideas to make things better. At 15, I'm saying, let's get a volumetric bagger because there's a big company now, CL Ice. We actually started them and they just took off because they went with all the new advancements and things like that. Now they're a multi-million dollar company. Our company was shut down, you know, a couple years after my grandfather died. Yeah. So 17 years old, he passes away. How does this start to go south? Like what exactly goes down? I can tell you the day. So he, the day he died, I left his house. Like, listen, I got my car. They gave me 5,000 for the car because I didn't do drugs. My mother actually drug tested me 10 times. Oh, she was one of those parents that did the drug testing. And the thing is, I didn't, do, I didn't drink or do drugs. You know, she was nuts. She was actually a drug counselor too. She worked at Red Cross. She was a drug counselor and she, you know, so... I'm driving down this road and I was like, I think I can get an eight ball. Just randomly. Just random. How does that come to mind? Because of that stupid video, the Ice T Hustler video, the yeah, music video. You weren't in drugs. Even no. because of that, you just. I saw it. I knew what he did and that's what he talked about. You know, he was always selling drugs and stuff. So I was like, why can't I do that? Did your friends do drugs too? I didn't, at that time, nobody did. Okay. But I had the connection there. Nobody knew, you know, I'm in a little town in New Jersey. And what year is this? What time frame? 1989, 90. Okay, I wasn't time. even born yet. No, that's what I'm saying. Like he would, yeah. So I, I knew I could go to Philly and buy an eight ball for $120. Okay. So I'm like, what do I do with it? So I'm going around. There's this woodbine that's like 20 miles away. And I was like, let me find some way there and see what they do. And that's what happened. Just started like that. Met a dude. I was like, listen, I can get an eight ball. What do you give me for? He's like, 150. I was like, okay. So when I got three eight balls, made 150 bucks profit. Then we start, then in high school, when I come back to Millville High School, I was like, I'm breaking this shit down. And I'm giving the five guys to sell on the street somewhere. I don't want to ever want to touch it. Like, I didn't want to ever get dirty. 
And I always said, listen, I'm going to jail. It's going to be for a real reason. Like, I'm not going to jail. You're not going to catch me with a 20, you know? And that's just, it just went from there. And I starved because I knew once I got into the drug game, it's worse than doing drugs, in my opinion. Um, the addiction is the making the deal and the money coming in. Um, but I didn't spend anything. Like, I'm not a big spender. So I knew I wanted to buy a quarter key. So I'm going in Camden now, which is, you know, outside of Philly. Tanned up, my hat creased way down. They think I'm Spanish. I'm walking these projects, you know, with eight grand trying to buy nine ounces at the time at nine, 18 years old, you know, before college. And they could have just killed me. I'm walking down these halls where they cut the doors in half and the, bo the bottom of the doors were just like gates with dogs and everyone. And the, at the end of the room, there's one dude, two, door, two guys with guns and one, you walk in this room, guy with kilos on the thing, what do you want? They could just took my money and just left me there. But if something went wrong, they let the dogs out because there's only one way in, they'd run upstairs, they had a place to get outside. You know, so I did like the dumbest shit. Now, like I'll never do that now. What are you thinking going into a place like that? I don't think I did. You just, you just wanted to do it? I just wanted to do it. That's crazy. And then driving home, you're driving home over the bridge from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, there's always a cop sitting. And I was like, I know what he is. But I was very smart too. In the fact, I wouldn't speed. I didn't smoke. All my paperwork was always right. You know, my father being an attorney, he was good for some things. <laughs> so he made sure like my, if I ever got a speeding ticket, he took care of, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's I'm not, I'm smart about things at that time. So when I start making money from that point though, I go to college. So I go to, first I go to Goldie Beacom my first year out of high school. And what is that, a community college? It's a, it's, a, it's a small college in Delaware, it's a little business school. Well, I'm probably there six weeks. I put a pool table in my room. Okay. So the, the dorms were, they're like apart, little apartments. They're like two bedroom apartments and there's four to a floor. So I put a little six foot pool table, you put money in, like I, I'm always hustling, you know? And I bring some friends up for a mixer. So I was actually pledging at this time for the first time ever they let a freshman pledge because I knew a couple of guys there from, you know, so <clears throat> I bring some friends up for this mixer. And of course what happens, they get in a fight. So it's three of my guys against everybody. So we're fighting in this dorm. And the, it was, we not me was like the pledge thing that this, you know, this alpha had. And I was like, okay, well, these dudes don't help me fight. So we start beating them up too, the, the fraternity I was pledging on, you know? So we get in a 20 minute fight in this, down the steps, hall, I mean, the RAs, everybody's getting beat up. We walk out, next day I get called to the office, like, <clears throat> Mr. Riley, you got problems. I was like, yeah, no shit. So he says, you know, I said, well, listen, here's the problem. You let all these dudes drink underage and you're gonna come at me? If they weren't drunk, it might not happen. We're not going to kick you out, but we're going to tell you you got to leave the end of the semester. Like, all right, so <laughs> I got to go home and tell dad this now, like, because at this time I'm living with dad. So I'm like, all right, what do I got to do before I get, I got three weeks left. So I find another school that'll take me because um, I did a little golfing back then. So I said, I'm going to go to Wesley where my cousin's going. Tell them I'll, I'll go come play golf for them if they let me in. So I had it all set up. So I went, hey, dad, listen, I just got thrown out of Goldie Beacon. But I'm, I got accepted Wesley, so don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, you actually told him you got thrown out. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did tell him. And, you know, my dad, was a, my dad was an asshole. He still is an asshole. But, like, you know, you hear stories, and my grandma told me that one day my father was in the library uh, when he was in college, and one of the kids told him to be quiet because he was talking. He took the book and hit him in the face with it and told him, don't tell me to be quiet. So my father was a dick, you know, so I have it naturally. Like, so I was like, Dad, he's like, all right. So we go there, and I start a casino. And you start a casino at, at this Wesley. New <laughs> yes. Oh my God. So, but then it's in Dover, Delaware. And so I went from Wilmington, Delaware, Dover, Delaware, which is all the way down by like Dell Tech. What? Everybody's looking for weed. Oh, hey, I can get weed. And you're still selling Coke at this time. Now it's Coke and weed. Coke. You know, normally people start with weed first and then go <laughs> I into went the Coke. other way. So now it's Coke and weed. And this, now it's, you know, this is back in the day before all this exotic stuff. This is just the brick terrible junk weed with seeds this big in the bottom of the pound bag. <clears throat> but I was like, I can get it. So I, we, in my room, we had a casino all night, every night going. I'm making a couple thousand dollars a week in the casino at my room. Then I'm bringing in fucking pounds of weed too. 
that this school's never seen of. Everybody's on the fucking high now. And I'm bringing in pounds and selling them for way too much money because all these kids are like, where are you getting it? How do you get it? Hey, it doesn't matter. This way. So I had everything set up. So that went on for a couple of years till I got asked to stop by my mother. She knew you were running a drug business. She didn't know, but she knew if that makes sense. You know, a mother has a way of knowing. They, yes, yeah. you know. So, and I still remember the day I was talking to her on the phone, and she, I'm coming down the highway. She's like, "Can I talk to you?" My mother's a little Italian lady. I was like, "Sure." I'm thinking she never usually she just hits me with a spoon. Like you know, my mother still beats me at 40 years old. You know what I mean? So she's like, um, "Can I talk to you?" You know, I'm really concerned. You know how moms are. I was like, "Gotcha, mom, no problem." Shut it down. Shut you it shut down. it down for her? At the college. And how long did you shut it down for? Well, I only shut it down to college, then I left college and came back, and then so I just went all in. Now, at the second college, what, what's your degree you're studying for? Management. Management? That's it. And yeah. do you end up getting that degree? I do, but I, I, never did, I never did any homework. I paid for all my papers to get done. I mean, I, I did zero. You were a businessman. I was a businessman. You're an no, entrepreneur. Listen, that's it. I, I know how to get the papers. I know what to do. You know, and to this day, I still do the same thing. I so mean, I'm curious about the casino aspect of it. How did that work? How did that work in college? How did you run a casino and make money from it? So I, we had a blackjack table set up. We had CeeLo. I so love CeeLo. I would take a dollar per play, 50 cents on blackjack. So you had the 50 cents if there's, we had three, three seats at the blackjack table. So I paid a girl to deal for us because it, it, there was co-ed room. So she would deal. The CeeLo, I had a guy just watching. He would just take a dollar out of the pot every time like that. And we just split it. And this is like when the internet was just get coming around. So like nobody had online. Like I had a thing, you know, that noise. I don't know if you heard it before, but trying to get online, there was no internet. So we had complaints every day about our room being until five in the morning. That's when I shut it down. But I paid the RA on the thing. He was getting a thousand dollars a week to shut up and make sure we're okay. So everybody was making money. So it was it was set up perfect. How much were you making? I was probably making 2,500 a week. Cash. Cash. That's crazy. And listen, that's more my dad's making as an attorney at that time, you know what I mean? And I'm just, listen, putting it in. At that time, my, my roommate was my cousin and he probably still hates me. Um, but he actually left because it was just too much. I mean, we were just, listen, I didn't care about school. This, this, is, this is a business right here. And what are you doing with that money? Putting it away. And you're, you're 20 about. I'm 21. I'm probably 20 to 21. Yep. How do you have that mindset to just do that? Because most 20 year olds are just pissing away that money. They don't give a shit. Listen, I wouldn't even buy sneakers. I was <laughs> like, that's when car hard sweatshirts were big. I'd buy one. Fuck that. Keep, give me the cash. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I never had to, you know, my father was always well dressed. But again, growing up with my mom where we didn't have anything, that didn't affect me. I'd rather do things with it, you know? Um, I traveled a little bit, like I would go see a girl in California or Oregon, you know, that kind of stuff. But I just, I would put it away in a shoebox. And what if someone like um, was around you, how, how do you think they would describe you from back then? What's your personality like? I was, I was actually a good, a better guy back then. Not better, I'm a good guy now, I think. But I, you know, I would do anything I can for people I like. I don't like a lot of people. That's the only thing, like I don't, your yeah, you see, I mean, <laughs> I like dogs, you know, cause listen, they don't talk back, they love you, and they leave you alone. Um, but you know, li listen, I was a hustler. I mean, that's what they, everybody knew. I mean, if Devin's around, he's making money. He's not here unless there's a reason. You know, cause I didn't, I don't hang out. I don't party. I didn't want to do any of that. You know, when I, when I was selling a lot of weed, I would scrape the stuff off the table and sell it. Like that's how tight I was. You know what I mean? Well, were you cocky at all? Like, were you an asshole? What, what no, you I wasn't really an asshole because I always saw, you know, so let me let me go there. From college, I came into sports betting. So that's what I really like. You were in everything. I like taking bets. Okay. So as I'm leaving college, my mom didn't say anything about don't don't be a bookie. I mean, you know, but I she but, said don't be a drug dealer. <laughs> she said don't be a drug dealer. Right. <laughs> so being a bookie turned into I like that too much. You know, um, I love being the house. So. I, with the weed, we had I had I had the money, the capital to start booking because you needed you know good money. You can't get a bad name for not paying. So that's why I did that first set of money I saved. I put into the, now I put into the book. So I'm 22 now, running the book with a couple hundred people. I'm paying the guys, the the, the mob guy in Philly. One day, one Christmas time, I'm giving twenty thousand in an envelope. Like this is just to leave me alone because they ran. 
I was only 20 minutes out of Philly, so the mob guys were up there. They knew what was happening. You know, if they're losing book, they know it's coming to the next guy. So they came and talked to me like, you got to pay. That's why you got the idea to pay them money. Yeah. I was like, listen, no problem. Was it scary when they approached you? So, I, yes, yes, I'm not going to lie. Not, listen, I, was, I played softball in the city, and uh, the underboss of the Philly mob came up to me. He's like, take a ride with me. Fuck. At like, your softball game. Now, at this time, I'm one of the few dudes hitting home runs. I was good at softball. And they're betting $20,000 a game. This dude comes over, he's like, I gotta talk to you. Now I've known him for a while. His, his name's Mouse. He's like, I gotta take a ride with me. Okay. Takes a ride, he's like, I didn't know what was going on. Like, you know, at that time I already know what's, what it's all about. I didn't know. He said, yeah, you gotta pay something. I got you. That's it. And you just had the money to give to him. There it is, yeah. Wow. Because you know, my, my thing is, it was coming so easy, why piss anybody off? And, and you know, People with a book, you know, with a book, I was never about violence, you know, because that's what gets you in trouble. So instead of being, if you owe me 50000 let's say, I'd start writing letters to your, your wife. Like, hey, listen, Ian owes me 50000 What can you do? Because gamblers don't want, they're not like drug addicts. They try to hide that. I'd go to your job. I'd send people. So I, two times I'd beat people up. That's it. Out of... 20 years. You beat people up if they owed you money. Twice. And only because they disrespect me. One dude I beat up in a grocery store. In the middle of the grocery store? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, I got to hear the story. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, but I wasn't about violence. I was more, in, and you get more money from that. Listen, if I break your legs, you're still not going to pay me. But if I embarrass you and tell your wife that you're gambling, you're going to pay, so I don't say anything else. That's smart, yeah. So <clears throat> one of my runners was a dairy salesman. He sold like milk and yogurt and all that shit. What's a runner? One of my, they would take bets for me. So I had guys in the office, they would, you know, take the numbers. I, I would never watch the game. I would just call them, hey, listen, how much do we have on the Eagles game? Being right out of Philly country, if the Eagles won, I got buried all the time. Like, and Penn State, you know, so I hated the Eagles. I hated Penn State. I hate the fucking Phillies, you know, because they cost you money. Cause you know, but so when my runners, you know, who worked for, you know, worked in the book, he would take bets for me on Sunday, usually and Saturday, Sunday, but he also, would take like we would take parlay cards and things like that and he'd drop them off at all his people during the week on his on his milk route and then pick them up so one of the managers of this grocery store owed me five or seven thousand dollars not a big deal but I, you know i said give me some all oh, if you give me a hundred dollars a week i'm happy just make an effort don't have a new car and say you can't pay me you know because then i like i feel some kind of way so this dude starts talking shit on me. He calls me like, I'm not fucking paying. I was like, okay, I got you. So I was just in a mood one day, and this time I start doing, I'm, this time I'm juiced up, I'm juicing now. Like that's the only drug I did with steroids, a lot of them. And uh, I know what story he's in. So I go look in the store, I see this dude. And he's like, talking shit. I say, my man, listen, we can do this two ways, and both ways, I'm gonna win. And he swung at me. Okay, so I fucked him up in the store, down the whole aisle, the whole soup aisle, it was a soup aisle, and beans and shit. So I take this dude, beat him, and then take him down the aisle, in the thing, and poof, everywhere, okay? Well, the next day I'm at the gym, and the cop I know, state trooper, is like, hey, listen, man, you gotta go to the store. I said, I'm not fucking, tell him to charge me, you know? Now you gotta go, okay. So I go to the store, they make me buy all the dented soup cans. And they didn't press, they didn't press any charges, okay. right? He didn't, because he knew, but like he, but I had to buy all the nine hundred sixty dollars worth of damaged Mercer, which I donated to the soup kitchen. So <clears throat> that's how I was. You know, like I said, it wasn't about violence, but you know, let's let's kick back. That same year, I'm there with my my girl, my daughter's mother at the time. I'm at the casino. She's a little thing where like your tits hanging out, you know. And I'm playing table, and this time, and I I I do play at the casino. So I'm playing me five hundred dollars a hand blackjack, and I'm twenty two, twenty three, but I got twenty grand in my pocket. You know, I don't care. But I'm on a run. I'm probably up $25,000. And this guy comes up to me. And at this time, I'm also playing with the state police softball team, selling drugs, gambling. I'm playing with the state police softball team. So, you know, I was right in, you know. And <clears throat> guy comes up and he's like, lean over my girl. And she knows not to say anything. Like, I protect you damn, But listen, I don't care if everybody wants to fuck my chick. I'll look at him like, ha I'm taking her home tonight and you're not. Like that's, I'm just a cocky prick like that. Like look all you want, I, you know, don't disrespect her. Don't just do whatever you want. So he looks over and he puts his head over 
her shoulder like those so she's like Devin can you I was like my man back the fuck up a little bit now I'm gonna run like I don't give a fuck about what's going on but I'm gonna run like I'm making you know like some up 25,000 dude comes back and she hits me I said, so I turn around like my man and he raises the cup whack drop this dude right in the middle of the casino right in the middle of the floor I look over and like one of the guys that play softball was the undercover cop in the casino so he turns around I was like all right so I pick my money up and my chips I go thing cash out I'm walking out in this little security guard, probably 5'9", 140 pounds. He's like, Mr. Riley, can you please stop? I'm like, no, man. So I take my card. So I'm a little dick. I take, you guys some fucking charge me here. Take my card. You find out where I live and everything. So my girl's like, just stop. He's going to lose his job. I'm like, all right. What do they do? I stop. They put me upstairs to the cells in the casinos. The cells in the yeah. casinos. <laughs> So I'm locked up in the casino at by 23 years old. Yeah, by, by a cop. And then so the state police come in. Well, the state police was like, well, maybe she wasn't wearing that shirt. You wouldn't have had a problem. Well, then she starts running her fucking mouth. I was like, I'm, they're writing me more charges. Not you. Shut up. So I go out of there with like seven charges at a casino because the dude was messing with my chick. So my father being an attorney at this time, I called him. I was like, listen, um, got a little... Incidentally, I said, I got a few charges, no problem. You know, I also had a speeding ticket down there. My father's slick. He says, there's two casinos or two courthouses in Atlantic City, two sides, one for like traffic, one for other stuff. My father gets it all scheduled in a traffic one. The dude that I hit in the casino was in the other one. They call his name three times, dismiss it. Oh, wow. So, you know, like I got out of trouble, like probably more than I should have yeah. been like that. And that might have made me go a little further on in different things, you know, in life. Because was that the first time you were ever like arrested in that sense? I got arrested a few times just for fights, like local minor shit. Yeah, nothing. Nothing big I, that I had never to come. Right. Yeah. No. 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 And the thing is, uh, I, I I got very complacent in what I was doing. Is the is one of the problems? You know, like I'm I'm selling a hundred pounds while I'm playing in the parking lot of the softball field with the cops. I'm pulling in with a trunk full of weed and selling, having somebody come pick it up out of my trunk because I'm playing softball. It was also a different time period back way then. Different, too. Way you different. Way You couldn't do that now. No. <laughs> That's, I wouldn't, if people could, right now, the way, well, you even think people can't hold water now. You can't, the drug game is so messed up now. Like, I, I wouldn't even consider it. I mean, not even, you, there's not enough money to ever even consider doing that again. Now, were you a, gambler like an addict or were you just doing it for fun i, I don't like gam i like money so and when i try to explain to people there's a difference i've studied gamblers you know watching them because you know like i wouldn't I've, i didn't watch a football game for years i just want to know who i needed to win and tell me what my end and end result is so i don't i don't like gambling like i don't like the rush i want to know i want to make money so if i take twenty thousand to vegas if i make 20 i leave if i lose 20 i walk away i don't chase it i don't I don't like that. I like money. That's and hard to do. It is. Listen, money and women are my vices. I, I can tell you what my, but I don't drink, which makes me help better decisions That's too. You, you understand? So I, I, again, it's all, it revolves around money is what, you I know. mean, you had a, such a strong mindset though. Like that could have been channeled to something so good too. Like listen, at that time, I know you did later on, but early. But that's what the, that's what, when I got charged, you see, that's the problem. That's why I got such, you know, high numbers because listen, Everybody did psychiatrists I went to in prison. Like, you're an asshole. Like, you could have done anything you wanted. You know, but it, that, it's not about that. You know, it was about putting it all together. I ran my drug operation like a business. I mean, that's what it was. If you, I mean, the most successful drug dealers don't do their own drugs, and they treat it like a business. And that's what it was. That's why, me. like, the cartel's successful. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they, and, and their money coming in is crazy. But it's just, it's, it's you know, if you do it, you can't make good decisions. I've seen so many people lose everything they have because of alcohol and drugs and gambling. I think people actually, I think gamblers lose more than drug addicts. I mean, I think gambling's much worse. Because you know? you're losing your possession, your life, everything. You're and losing you, everything. Right. And you, the, the thing is, you're always chasing. Listen, when you do drugs and you can't afford them anymore, then you're stuck and you're shivering on the floor. Yeah. You know, when you're gambling, you find another book that's going to take your action. True. So it's just, Gambling just, I've just seen it ruin so many people. But again, I, I enjoyed being a house, you know, and that, that's, that's one thing that if I could buy right now, casino, I would. Now at 22, you had a kid or you were about to have a kid? So my first, yes, I, so I had my first son at 22. An uh, accident or? None of them were planned. None of them were planned. Ah, no. 
That's such a young age to have a kid, Listen, man. I know. That's it was, crazy. He's lucky I like him, but I tell him all the time his mother should have swallowed him. <laughs> like, life would be so much easier. You say that to your son. Oh, yeah, all the oh, time. Oh, man. So, yeah, like I have, a, I have, I have four children. Okay. Um, I speak to my – I don't speak to my youngest son. Um, he's 22. I haven't spoken to him in probably five years. Uh, well, five or six years, he was the – he came up as the entitled one. So – my son, so I have a daughter by one lady, I have two, two children's mom. So a daughter and then three sons by another one. And the three sons, none of them were planned. I wasn't even with her for the three kids. Like I picked her up one time for in a year and like banged her out and knocked her out. Like, you know, I always made a joke. Like, I know you just spit in the ice cube tray and when you get mad, you fucking jam one in. Like, you know, that's because I don't know how these kids off came. I really don't. Um, but my oldest son is, he's, he's aces, man, Devin Jr. Um, he's running a construction company. He's, he's, he's my right hand man all the time. Chase, my next son, uh, he's an idiot. He's a gambler. Um, I wonder where he gets it from. Yeah, listen, it comes naturally, you know, but he, he's a chaser. Like he loves that where if you, if I make a thousand dollars, I'm happy. He can be up 5,000. I'll say, Chase, cash out. Like, well, stop. Now I might make it 10. You make another five tomorrow. Stop now. But he doesn't. So, my, my youngest son I was saying is, um, he was 16 and he called me, he said, uh, I want Chase, who is the middle, he was, Chase was 18 at the time. I need to borrow the F450, or F550, which is a big work truck. I was like, he's not driving that truck. But I said, what do you need? Like, tell me what you need. Uh, he hangs up on me, first of all. I'm big on respect. Like, don't fucking hang up on me. <laughs> you know, like, so I call him back, he doesn't answer. Okay. Well, I don't I mean no big deal. The next day I go to his house, you know, his mother who hates me, of course. If I'd have come home and been a crackhead, she'd have loved me. But I came home you know, kind of successful, you know, hustling right away, and she hated me. So <clears throat> he gives me the finger out of the door. So I'm like, hold on, this little, like, I'll beat you like a man. Like, it doesn't matter if you're blood or not. I haven't talked to him since. Because you beat him up. I didn't beat him up. I should have. And I didn't even get out of the car. I said, no problem. I called his mom. So you're going to let him treat me like that? He's like, he can do whatever he wants. Okay, no problem. And the mom, you're not close with at all? Nah, nah. So did you end up with either woman? Uh, oh, so it didn't work out either way. Nah, I didn't. Like you said, the, the, my son's mother, the, with the three sons, when I had Devin, we were breaking up. That was the casino woman that we were talking no, that, about? No, so listen, this is, how, this is how twisted this all gets. The casino woman was during, I got, I had a kid with somebody else when I was with her. Oh, okay. I had my last kid with her. <laughs> the daughter. The daughter was with her, yes, yep. This whole story is uh, fucked it's too, up. I, yeah, it's fine, listen. <laughs> you need a map to draw this out. It's all in the book that's coming out. So yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, so I had a kid, I was with, with Jeanette is her name, my daughter's mother, when I had my sons. Okay. And you know, Jeanette, when I had my last son with, with Nicole was my son's mother, I said, Jeanette walks in and she's crying. They didn't know each other at the time. And she's like, um, I see her crying. And I knew what, what it was. She was like, four, Nicole's like four months pregnant with my younger son at the time. I was like, what's up? And she, this is now, now, there's internet now a little bit. You know, she's crying. I was like, she's like, you got Nicole pregnant again? I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Did I forget to tell you? <laughs> and she's like, oh my. So I was like, listen, I'm not gonna fight about it. Either we get over it or I'll leave. I mean, it's that simple. And we got over it for a little bit and then just didn't. What did your uh, parents think about having a kid that young? My mother actually liked it because she thought it would calm me down. And she wanted to be a grandmother. And she wanted, <laughs> exactly. My father, he didn't care because he didn't care when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like he was like, oh, another kid, here's a kid, blah, blah, blah. He, uh, he might have seen my sons 10 times and, you know, five times a year maybe. I don't know if that. My, you know, when I was in prison, I saw my dad maybe five times. I could call him any time. But he never came up. My stepfather never missed a weekend. And you know that's important. Yeah. Especially then. You know what I mean? Like he like he's aces. So twenty two, you have this successful book. Why don't you just stick with that? Like why well, even get back into something? So because <clears throat> so let's see. What kept it going? I, I was in a raid that they let me walk from. What do you mean let you walk? Like what so, happened? I was at a guy's this guy's house who I didn't do, have business with. We actually just went to, we used to go to like car stereo. So like I had a system in my car. We go to these competitions and things. He gets raided. And he, you know, he was, he, he was a Coke dealer and he gets raided. I'm sitting on the fucking couch and they feds blow his door in. 
Like you were you. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm 30 as fuck. My car is full, but we didn't have that thing. And my car was parked across the street at the time. So they didn't get in my car. All right, get out of here. I was like, okay. You got life. <laughs> yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> and then I actually started growing weed too that next year in the woods. This is before. So we were growing this skunk weed at the time. It was, you know, and it's, at the end, it's, you, you could buy the garbage weed for like 800 pounds. This stuff's going for 3,500 pounds. So I hook up with a guy that's growing 100 pounds a year outside. So I like doing that too. <laughs> and this is at 22 years old. Yeah, 22, 23, yep. Um, and you never even considered working at regular job ever after college? Like, did you even apply anywhere? No, I, so I, I, I started a detail shop. Okay. Um, and I called it a clean getaway. This was to launder the money, I'm guessing. <laughs> so I, I had a detail shop. Um, no, I, I, you know, I, I worked for the city of Millville. Um, because I knew the controller at the time and I, there was a hiring freeze. I just wanted to see if I get a job. It's because, you know, you, everyone thinks I'm going to get a job and make it $400 a week is not, you're not doing it for $400 a week. So I worked in the city for a couple of years and I was like, I'm not doing this shit. I didn't even cash a check for a year. Like they had to tell me to cash my checks. Because you were just holding it. I was just holding it because it was just 400, like $484, you know, something like that. So it didn't do anything. That's kind of like a lot for back then, though, no? At that age? Yeah, but now when in you're still, listen, I can, I, can, I can sell a pound of weed and make that. Yeah. And I'm selling 100, 100 pounds a week. I'm meeting a cop from Philly who's selling me the weed. A dirty cop. A dirty cop. He would drive over the bridge sometimes and maybe in his Philadelphia cop car to buy weed. Wow. Yeah. So it was just. So where are you keeping all this cash? Because you're bringing in thousands at this point. So I used my dad's house as a stash spot until he found it. <laughs> He found the stash. He found my drugs and my money one time. Yeah, yeah. What does he say to you? Well, because I didn't have, you know, back then he, there was not near as much. And so I would like take his couch cushions and I put like 10,000 wrapper and stick it between his couch cushions, like in a room he didn't sit in. And I would take the vent covers off, like in the basement of like the return ducts and stick Coke in there. So I could always just stop by, grab four ounces, whatever. But that, you know, like that's where I hit all my shit. One day, my dad's such a psycho. He saw my footprints in the carpet downstairs. Like, what's going on here? Opens up. Well, that just my father being who he is. He went through his whole house, found that. He got rid of the coke, kept the cash. His wife took some cash. It was probably me forty, fifty thousand. But you know, they I got some of back, a lot of them back. But she still spent some. You know, so I, that's what I was doing. I I didn't. Have, that was the biggest problem. Is what do you do with your money? Because you're always scared somebody's gonna steal it. Um, I always had an apartment, but every time I go away it get broken into. So if I had somebody sitting there, it didn't matter. So it, that's the, one of the hardest things about making that money is what do you, where do you put it? You know, like you don't have any, you don't trust anybody. You're my, my kid's mom, she's, she hates my life anyhow. So if she could take it, she's gonna steal it just to hurt me. Can't you know? put it in a bank. Can't put it in a bank. You know, the company's making, I, what, how many cars can I possibly do? I mean, we're busy. I got a bunch of people work for it, but you can only do so much out of a shop. And you never had partners. You were this, you know, you Google your name and it seems like you, you're working with like the cartel and all this so, crazy yeah, shit. You know, I, I was always connected with some of those guys, but I never- You had to be because you're, you're buying and dealings, yeah. this and that. So you had no partners, man. The dude that told me, Rosetti, the kid, you know, you saw the video, he was my closest thing. I was getting out of drugs. My 32nd birthday, I was getting out of drugs. I hate, I don't like drugs to this day. I think they're disgusting. Um, my 32nd birthday, I was giving him everything. So he would have made, what what we at that time we would bring in, let's say 10 keys from Florida. And they're only $16,000 a piece back then. If you didn't touch it, you can sell them for 25. And he, I was gonna give him all that. Like, here's here's the connection. You know, I had to introduce him to the connection that I've, I, I busted my ass to find this connection in Florida. Um, and I'd pay a mule a $1,000 mule a key to bring it back up for me on the bus. A bus from Florida to Florida, here. Jersey. Mm -hmm. So you you don't have to go to Florida and get. I would it. fly down with cash. I would go give them the cash. Right. So I back then before nine eleven, I would put cash in my carry on the bottom of the thing, just fill with clothes. They they didn't check you back then, or I'd have it in my waist, you know, things like that. Now you can't carry five dollars and they're on you. So I would fly down there with the money and then set him back up on the bus. And he's just care how much how what does that look like all this ten Wait. kilos in a duffel in a Nike duffel bag. Back across to New Jersey. On a bus, which was a terrible ride. But listen, he's making 10 grand for two days. How often did you do this? Once a month. And that would turn into how much profit? So I would, we would, we cut it a little bit. I might put four ounces on a key at that time. Um, 
I was probably making forty to fifty thousand a month. And what does cutting mean in drug terms? I put isotol, which is the bodybuilding thing. We just mash up the brick of coke, mix it with four ounces, and put it back together. And that's safe. Like no one's dying. Right. From no. The it's, no. It's not like this. Whatever. That fentanyl. Shit, fentanyl. Yeah. No. This is just a bodybuilding supplement. They do shiny and white. And this is just to make it look like there's more than what these people are just actually to add getting. four ounces. So you could add sugar to it, basically. If yeah, you... they would know that this this blended well. So you take 36 ounces to make it 40 ounces, or mm. I make nine ounces to make it 10. This is crazy. Yeah, but <laughs> that's where the money was. So I was going to give them that because all I was going to do is take. I, I I was into real estate in my 30s. Start you know this is when I started getting into real estate. I was ready to go 100 percent legit. I say 180 percent legit because I still want to do. I want still want to be a book. Like I still want to take bets. But drugs, I was like over drugs totally. So you had a t like a twelve year run basically in this business. Was, oh yeah, twelve. I think it was fourteen years. I think <laughs> there's yeah. not many people in the world that can have that long of a run in this business. Because I was never flashy. You so think that was the key it had to it? Me. I had a Mercedes, a uh, E fifty five, in two thousand two or two or three. In two thousand three, nobody even knew I had it. I only took it when I go out. I kept it in a garage in another 40 miles away. I lived in a rental. I didn't, nothing, you know, I drove a piece of shit truck. How much money would you say you made in total throughout this whole <sighs> empire? A few million easy. All cash. So how does that get laundered? Because it's not all through the detailing no, business. No, no. So, you know, because I was, we, I'd spend a lot of cash on stuff. I had, I had different people to also take cash from me. Um, you know, like, so I would have somebody buy a car for me. So I had a contractor at the time that I gave him 70,000. He bought me a truck, a, na a navigator and gave it to me, you know, that kind of thing. So it was, it was more of how do I make, how do I make everybody happy here? So it cost me a lot of money to get it clean, but I was okay with it because, you know, I say, listen, here's 50, here's 50 grand. Give me a $20,000 car, keep the rest. Well, who's not going to do that? Yeah. You know, so they're the things that, that, that we came into. And, you know, I met doctors, I met judges. Taking bets, you meet a lot of people. So that, that was kind of like my connection to get rid of things, hide things. I was also going to Costa Rica, um, which I can't get back to. I had, tw when they arrested me, I had 27 trips to Costa Rica. Wow. Where in a bank there. Oh, you had foreign money. So what, no, I, I take it from here and drive, take it to Costa Rica, and deposit it there. Wow. And so that's still there. Some Jordan Balfour shit right <laughs> well, now. <laughs> yeah. The, the money in Costa Rica is still there. However, I'm pretty sure if I ever got on a plane to go there, that they would still try to get me. They'd arrest Come me. home. Yeah, because, you know, and, and, and my attorney's like, well, you can go get it, but she's got to pay tax on it. I'm not risking that. I'm not going back. Whoever said prison's fun lied. It's just no fun. Did you have a number in your head that you wanted to achieve before getting out of the game? Or you were just it, go, 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 go? I, I didn't, I had one of my good friends, uh, her name is Alyssa. She's still my good friend. She would always be on me. I thought you're getting out. You gotta get out. You, gotta, you know how, you know how these girls are. Yeah. And so I had, I didn't have a number. I had more today. Like my 32nd birthday, I'm done. I'm, Keith's going to take it. And what happens right before that, we get knocked off. I'm just mind blown by your mindset. Like you, it's a total opposite of what you would think for a drug dealer. And I, like, where did, where do you think it came from? Your mom, your dad, a mixture of both, your grandfather? I, I, I my father was uh, not my father. Um, even though he's super intelligent, he just, listen, he's broke today as a very successful attorney. Been married five times. You know, he just didn't didn't put it together, you know? Um, I think it was more just watching. I think I learned on my own um, because I didn't have, like, my grandfather was my mentor, you know, growing up, since, you know, until the day he died. Um, but he, I was never, like I said, it comes back to just business. And I didn't, if I, I think if I would have drank or got high, my life would have been totally different today in, in everything I do, even when I came home. Um, but I just have no desire to be out of control and I'm not a controlling person. I'm in control of myself. Like I don't tell my chick what she can, none of that. Um, so my mentality, that's just been my mentality forever. And it's hard to try to tell, show people that as well, because that's the key. Discipline's the key to everything when it comes down to it. So I played softball. I hit every day because I want to be better than everybody around. You know, that's just the mentality I have. And I always want to, I want to win. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know. How do you think you were as a father during that Terrible. time period? Piece of shit. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm definitely, I don't like kids. <laughs> but I, you had kids. I, not on purpose. <laughs> so I, listen, I was definitely not a good father ever. Um, I'm a better when they're grown and can say, hey, dad, what can you do? Because right now, my oldest, like I will set them up. So when they're 17, I love them. But when they're 12 and crying or they like, get away from me. My, t- my Chase and Devin, my two oldest, they were fighting one day over a Game Boy in a car. This is how shit I am. I was like, let me see that. They get swoop, throw out the window. Now you fuckers can't fight at all. <laughs> so that's the kind of guy I was like, this, like, you want to fight? Uh, fight me. You know, my middle son, I keep talking about Chase, but I was watching him one day and he came, he and his brother got in a fight. He was probably four, Devin was six or seven. And um, this is about a year before I got in trouble. Chase comes out of his bedroom. After I threw Chase in his bedroom because he was fighting. He comes out and kicks Devin in the face, right? Because he's still pissed an hour later. So I jump out of the thing. I jump out of the chair, whoosh, smack his ass like hard as I could. Hurt my hand. This little fucker turns around and said, me not going to cry. And runs to his room. I was like, but so, you know, that I wasn't his. Their mothers actually were very good moms, which so I'm lucky for that. They just hated me. So they turned my youngest son against me because she wanted somebody on her side. And did the, did the mothers know what you were involved with? Oh, yeah. Everyone else. So they were they were cool yeah, because, the, as long as listen, the money was flowing in. They were eating dinners. They were not paying rent. You know, of course, yeah. They um they were all they were all they they knew. Listen, my daughter's mom was ride or die, but with that, she was also on the edge where she'd be the one to pull the trigger when she's mad at me. You, you know what I'm saying? So she was so loyal that when things went bad, she 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 shoot me. Yeah. Where my son's mother, she was just she has no loyalty. Excuse me, ever did. Oh, you know, she was just like, if you get in trouble, too bad. And what is your mom saying to you at like the, you, the peak of this? Because you, you promised her and then you went back on it. So mom knew, but I was also taking mom to Florida. So she so, was going along. Yeah. And just saying, you know, maybe he's not doing it. I think in her mind, she just, he's not doing it anymore. You yeah. know, his, the, the detail business, the real estate. I was in real estate. I, I think I'm in real estate when I was 29 and real estate was insane back then. And that's when the market was just nuts. I mean, so. When I got raided, they called Operation Deal Breaker because they were listening to my phone calls for 18 months. Okay, it was all deal. And I didn't know this, but I was, because I was on the phone, make the fucking deal. So I was calling Michelle, who actually was my girlfriend now, well, not now, but was for years. I got in trouble with her, but I was like, make the deal. Let's, you know, because she's always calling, hey, listen, and, and I was an agent. She owned a real estate brokerage at the time, and I was an agent working for her, and I would break her balls like, oh, can we make this happen? It's like, nope. Give me this what I want. So I was real like, they want this septic. I was like, we're not doing anything. You want the house or buy it or not. Yeah. Make the deal. So they called Operation Deal Breaker because I was always making deals on the phone. Did you have any close run-ins like over this 10-year span with the, with almost getting arrested? So I got pulled over on in Atlantic City with 150 pounds in the trunk. Car smelled. I was like, I'm done. Of weed? Of weed. Okay. I'm done. Like, I mean, I could smell it in it. The, it was a female state trooper. She came to the car, and it's probably 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And she, you know, gives her license. Mr. Riley, you've been drinking tonight? He's like, just water. I don't drink. You know, she's like, okay. And she's looking like, Fuck. I'm thinking she's just buying time because if not, I'm taking off. And she gives my license. I said, be safe. Okay. You what do you think that was? I have no idea. But she definitely knew. So then, you know, when something like you're panicked, like, fuck, like, so I get two miles down the road, I'm throwing the shit in the woods. You threw it in the woods? Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> Why were you even moving that to begin with on your own at that level? Because I was bringing it from a buddy of mine to me. And it was just best for me to do it right then. Because, you know, listen, I always, I never sped. I, you know, I knew anything. So, and again, I, I say I got complacent. I wasn't worried about anything. Yeah. But I should have known better. You know, I should have known better. Um, and that didn't scare you to say, Hey, I got to stop. Like this was too close to, you know, no, because I was like, I dropped off 10 pounds at the mall one time. Like, remember they used to have lockers in the mall. I don't know if you're young, but they used to have lockers in the mall. Yeah. Like in the movies, they yeah. had pe- the meetups and stuff. So I would drop stuff in lockers just like, you know, and like I would see the task force. So I had people on the inside. I had all license plate number. I had all cars. I had pictures of everybody that was on the task force for the county I lived in. So I knew who the players were too. So if I saw them, I knew something was wrong. I actually fought a couple of cops a few times uh, they, in my town that just didn't like me. Like they were at the, they're at the bar and they hit me or, you know, just, and I never, listen, 
I'm not one to tell, like, we're going to fight, we're going to fight, you know? So I had a respect with the, they, they respected me as I respected them as well. They have a job. It was always a game to me. Listen, you got a job to do, I got a job to do. You know, cops and robbers. So you literally could have got away with all of this. That's got to fuck you up to this you day. You know what, though? It, it does, but it doesn't. Because if, if Rossetti didn't tell on us, and, you know, you saw it, like, he told, so <clears throat> he told on not only me, I had 30, four or five co-defendants okay he told on people i didn't even know like he just drove around these dudes telling on everything all right so let's get to that how do you find out they're first investigating you i didn't know you had no idea so <clears throat> i'm i i call so I, I was playing softball around the country you know and i met a guy that lived in my area and he was a junior black mafia or junior black panther whatever it was and we, you know, got talking. He knew who I was, blah, blah, blah. And I knew him. And so, you know, we developed a relationship. So if if he needed something or I needed something, I would just call him up and I wouldn't buy it. I would borrow it and just give it back to him or he would do the same thing when he got his thing in, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> I'm, this time I'm, like I said, I'm playing ball. I call him up, I say, hey, I need nine ounces. He's like, sure, I'll leave in a car to the gym. So I drive to Washington Times, like 20 minutes away, pick it up. And I said, at that time I'm selling steroids too. So anything I get my hands on, you know, so I have 50,000 D ball, which were little like pink stop signs at the time in a, I call them pound bags, but like the Ziploc bags full of D ball and nine ounces. But again, I've been doing it so long. I don't get nervous. I'm coming down this back road. I see a cop sitting in the parking lot. So, listen, I got the windows down. I'm cruise control 50. I didn't go 51. I didn't go 49. I had my shit on 50. Cop pulls up behind me. So, at that time, my daughter's mom was dating a cop. So I'm thinking, maybe this is what it is, you know? And I'm, again, I'm not worried. My bag's in the back. You're not searching my car. Like, I know every, I studied every law there is. So <clears throat> I'm in there. I got, and I had come from my gym. I got basketball shorts on and a tank top. And I'm jacked up at the time. So this cop comes up to me. And um, he's like, license register, I give it to him. Now, you can't smell anything. You can't smell nine ounce. You can't smell a ball. So I know he doesn't smell anything. I got all the windows down. Comes back and, and as he comes back to the car, he asks me, like, how's your license? I see another cop pull over on the side. I'm like, hmm. So now I think, like, because we're on, like, a back road, they're going to take me out and just whoop the shit out of me for Jeanette, you know, my daughter's mom, my daughter's mother's boyfriend. Because, you know, like, I kind of talk shit back to him back and forth here and there. So I'm like, and another one comes up. I'm like, hmm. So the sergeant comes, O'Brien comes up to me. He's like, get out of the car. I was like, I get out of the fucking car. Are you nuts? No. He reaches the car and tries to pull me out of the window. At this time, I'm first of all, I'm 6'3". I'm probably 305 pounds juiced out of my head. I pull in drive. Drive off. I drive off. So <clears throat> I get on the phone. I call Michelle, who was the, the, my broker, who this girl, she's one of very good friends. She owns the real estate. I was like, listen, I'm probably not going to make the office today. Okay. <laughs> uh, the cops are behind me. I hang up with her. I call a floral place. I order flowers for this other chick that I was talking to, right? This is no shit. As the cops are behind me. Now, I know where I'm going. I'm going to the lake. And there's a lake about seven miles away from me. But I'm not going to speed here. I'm not going to break any laws. So, And the cops are tailing you. They're there right behind me. So I'm, I grab the bag and I take out. It, he had the um, the nine ounces wrapped in like a couple, like the plastic uh, like uh, shop right, shopping bags. So I take them out. And they're just so I have one Ziploc now. So I put that in my pants and I'm, as I'm going around bends, I'm throwing these bags out of the window so they can't see them. You know, as they're, I'm going this way, they're behind me. They can't see the bag for them. So I'm getting real. I grab the D ball. I put that in my shirt. I tuck my shirt in and I see there's a, I see two cops right here. They block me off like, ah, fuck. So I stop and they, you know, they're, they're, they're cars like this. Hmm. No, I go right around. So I get, I get to the stop street, put my blinker on. Look both ways, take off. Well, now I'm going about a mile further down the road, and now I see 20 cops behind me. I'm like, ah, shit, you know. But hey, listen, at that time you're not going to catch me, like, and, and I'm not worried. Like, I'm, you know, I make a right on this road. <clears throat> I go, I see, the, I see the little lake, Malaga Lake. Pull right in the parking lot, pull up, get out of the truck, get in the water. You went in the water. I jumped right in the water. Yeah, you can. That's on the internet. I jump in the water. I open my, I open the bag. I'm breaking the coke up out of the brick, and you see a big cloud go by. And I, I get the bag, and the bag floats down. I empty the D ball out. 
So your priority is just making sure you don't get caught with drugs with on you. Yeah. So why don't you just throw that shit out the window? Because they can get it okay. in the water and not get it. Okay. So by this time, I'm probably 50 feet out in the lily pads in the lake. And every cop's out there with long guns. I'm like, ah. And they're talking shit. And so, and I'm just cocky and arrogant. I'm like, I'm jacked up. Like, you know, hands up. All right, you got me. And you don't know why they were after you to begin with. I don't with. know at all. So, <clears throat> they, so when I get out of the water, they go to beating the shit out of me. Like they, they hog tie me. So the hands behind the back, feet tied up. And like I said, I was a big dude. Like I was jacked at the time. So I'm like, you know, and they just, I got longer hair at the top and they, they grab my hair and they're emptying tear, uh, mace. So one can empties and they're like, give me another one. I'm like, oh, so I'm like, yo, I can't breathe. I can't. And I'm like, I'm going to die here probably, you know, but I don't even say anything. They keep beating on me. They finally, I say, listen, I can't breathe. Like I can't breathe because they were opening my mouth as they're pulling my hair back, you know, and there's openings. So they take me to this little shitty, Franklinville Police Department. <clears throat> You're telling me you weren't fighting back at all with I, them? I was handcuffed. I walked right out of the water like this. Why would they just attack you like because this? Because I ran from them. Like you don't. That's what they did. Oh yeah. Wow. And this is this is in 2000 in 2004. Okay. And then they take you to the little police. So they station. take me to the little police station. So I'm in there talking shit, right? I smell like straight swamp water. You know what I mean? I'm in the lily pads. I got lily pads hanging out of my ass, and I'm hitting on the girl processing me. Like that's how much I didn't care. So, because I figure I'm getting out. Listen, by this time I got, I know all the good attorneys. I, I'm good. And you weren't caught with drugs on you. You know, I didn't have any drugs on you're me. You're straight. Yeah. What are you going to do? So they impound a truck and I said, they, all right, well, you have $50,000 bail. I said, what's the fastest you ever seen me bailed out? You know, because it's a little hick talking shit. If you're out here in 15 minutes, you're going to the county, you're not going to process for the week. I was like, all right, make a phone call. But what they did was, I had two cell phones at the time, one for work, kind of like real estate, one for, they, they gave me my phones back. So me being a, thinking I'm smart, I am, I use my phone. It's an air phone. I call, hey, listen, go grab 50,000 out of the safe. This is where I am, I need you here in 15 minutes. Call this girl, she's okay. Come bring me 50,000, they let me go, but they won't give my truck, but they give my phones. So I get to my, at this house, I was living with another girl, but I had a rental house, like close to my office where I was selling real estate. <clears throat> so I go there, I was like, I better clean this out just in case. So all I have there is a scale and some steroids. Everything else is gone and a couple thousand cash. Cause I'm thinking they might come, you know, if they put enough together, they may come get me, you know, for that, for like a looting or something because they didn't charge me that at the time. Yeah, what did they charge you with when you were processed? Uh, it was like a couple third degree charges and nothing that nothing. related to the original pullover. Yeah, just the pull. And then they didn't give me a loot and they gave me like um, illegal left turn and something else, like some dumb shit. Right? So you get back to this house. What do you do? So I get, I clean it out. Like everything's out. Like I, I'm, if there was, if we cut Coke up on the table, I'm, I'm swiffing that thing out. You know, like I'm clean. So it's clean. But I leave the scale. I had this big, beautiful scale. It was like this big. You know, big uh, uh, industrial scale, which I left there. You know, what are they going to do? So I get my kids the following Friday for visitation. <clears throat> and at that time, I said, talk, spoke about Michelle. Michelle had a son, and I was selling real estate for her. You know, she's a good friend of mine. I actually sold her house because I was going to build her another one. And she was living in this house that in Pittsgrove that I was living in too when my girlfriend wasn't at my girlfriend's house. But she lived on the other side, like we weren't together. And I hear, about five in the morning, I hear, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, ah, shit. So I jump out of bed, you know? And I, at that time I had a mastiff, but he was outside and I hear him barking. And all of a sudden I hear a window, boom, they throw a flash thing through my bedroom window. So I'm on the ground, butt ass naked, condom on the floor, right? Because I was banging this chick earlier in the day, you know, like straight scumbag. And they come in like deep. Who is arresting you? Like who's coming? It's in? the feds. The fe feds F and the FBI. DEA, FBI and DEA. Wow. So I'm like, okay. So again, I I don't think it's a big deal at all because it's the I, FBI coming at but you. But I think it's from this thing before because listen, at that point, I had I just I didn't I barely touched anything once a month, you know, drugs wise, and like I said, it just got to a point where this is what I did every day, you know. <clears throat> so all, there was no paperwork there. Like I had another office. I did the book betting in. So there's nothing at the house. You know, a couple thousand dollars in one of my suit pockets. 
So they're going through the house and they're tearing it up. So they take her out and her son and my kids, my three boys are there. And they take them out at gunpoint. So I'm like, hey, this is bullshit. Well, I always like, I don't ever, I don't like dressing up, but I'm always like put together. Like you'll never see me like in a Walmart, like in the, the white shirt and the, like, you know, how these, so many people go out to the store. I was like, you know, I had some nice t-shirt jeans on every time I go out. Well, they put me in sweatpants, f slippers, and like a shirt that didn't match. The cops did. Okay. Because they knew like I was always kind of put together. So again, they're asking me questions, but I'm not even answering. I was like, listen, call my attorney, you know, and I hear I'm like, what's that noise? They're bringing a backhoe down the road to dig up my backyard. But they're in the wrong spot, like these dumb fucks. Like, you know, so I'm like, no big deal. Well, so the fe the DEA, one guy takes me, he's a fat guy, puts me back in the car. He's like, you want to talk about this? He's like, you know, he's like, Yo, do you want to tell me about the bank robbery? I was like, oh my God. They tried to put this bank robber on me because I knew the guys that did it. They thought you were a bank yeah, robber. Yeah, they thought, I say, like, I'm not, I'm not, you, I'm going to walk in the bank 63290, give me your money. Like, you're not going to lose me. Like, it wasn't me. So they're like, but we know you know who did it. You orchestrated it. You were the mastermind. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, as, as we pull down the road, we're going by the real estate office, and I see the feds carrying all the shit out of there. I'm like, ooh, that's not good. You know, the computers and things. And it's Michelle's office. This girl has done, she, the girl with Michelle has never even seen drugs, gambled. Like, she was, she's probably the most innocent person you ever meet. Did she know you, what you were doing was illegal, though? She, people had told her, and since I passed the background check for to get my real estate license, she was like, listen, he passed the background check. He's good. And I'm making her money. You know, like I'm selling house. Like I'm good at what I do. So she may have known, but she didn't know, if that makes sense. And like I said, she's never seen drugs. She's never seen big amounts of money. Like that's just not the world she lived. She lived in a bubble. So we're driving by her office and I see him walking out with all these computers. And she's like, oh, fuck. I, we go down about a mile, make a left, and there's a fire department. And all of a sudden I see like, um, TV station three, six, and ten, and I see those red antennas up. I'm like, all oh, this for running from the cops? Like, what? We make another left. All I see is half my guys. So they swept. They did a sweep. They're picking everybody up. All the guys that were working for you. I'm like, fuck. How did they manage to get everyone? Phone taps. So they were tapping you for a while. Eighteen months. Twenty. I was for eighteen months. I was under twenty four hour surveillance. Do you know why they first started investigating you? So. They investigated me, come to find out. So the feds originally were on, the, they arrested me. <clears throat> but the state had been investigating me since for years and years because they would say, I got it from here, I got it from here. They put me into it. But when I got there, when they they said, uh, how, what did they say? There was 16,000 hours of phone calls that they, and because of the Patriot Act, it's the only way they got the warrant for me. One phone call. So after 9-11, the Patriot Act comes in. The feds went as me as a terrorist, you know, used that as a way to get a phone tap on my phone. And they did it for 18 months. But what did you say that triggered that? So I had one call. So I went into 7-Eleven, and this is when the burners had just come out. <clears throat> and I opened up, I buy a 70, back then it was like 70 bucks, because these 10 kilos never came up. Like they didn't get here yet. So I called down there. I was like, yo, shit never got here. Like, do you know what's going on? Because I couldn't get a hold of anybody. That's all I said. And right. they were just going through all the phones. I took the, the phone. Yeah. Well, I took the phone, broke it, and put it in trash. Well, the feds had a box at the time from because of the Patriot Act, because of Bin Laden. They could pick up any anything I was using. They had they had a warrant, a roving warrant. They called it. They had access to anything I touched. So if I would have used your cell phone, they could listen. Or they they could get this signal off of the phone. They, like I said, this is when it was analog before it was all the digital stuff. Now they could take it and hear what we're talking about. Wow. So that's what kicked it a whole off. So. I was under 24 hour surveillance for 18 months. I didn't know it. They were good. I'm, I'm playing softball all over the country. I was in Texas. I see a guy and they're hitting me. I'm going out and, and I'm getting some balls where home runs are hit. And I see a guy taking pictures. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? What are you fucking doing taking pictures? Like, oh, you know, we're taking a picture of the paper. Well, they're why taking pictures of me. Isn't it crazy how the Fed just like, they, they could go on forever for those investigations because yeah. they want to be bulletproof. They, yeah. And so I, I, I so. <laughs> I get arrested that I get arrested and I see 30 people I know. And then I see Jamal, who was the other, he wasn't, we didn't do business like that, but he, so I know he's got his own shit going on too. So I'm sitting in thing and there, that's when Akon came out with locked up. <laughs> the classic song. Listen, these motherfucking cops, this is no bullshit. 
I was in the fire station locked up. The you fire know, station. That's they had that was the central reception point where, you know, they were taking people out and that's where they're processing everybody. They took ten thousand fingerprints on me. They played locked up for seven hours straight on repeat. Like just wanted to kill myself. So <clears throat> and then they're asking, Do you want to cooperate? I was like, No. Like that's I'm different. I, nobody made me sell drugs. I chose to sell drugs. And I'm thinking, I'm looking around like, I think everybody's good. Like just I'm telling everybody like, well, then they arrested Michelle, who the girl's living with. So let me, let me real quick go back to Michelle. So Michelle and I were selling real estate. We did real well together. She was a broker, but I'm a sales guy and she's the most honest person you ever meet. We had a piece of land for sale for a million dollars. Okay. And she had people came that flew in. I said, listen, I'm going to go, I'll sell it to them. You go with me as the broker. You know, I was still fresh, but I'm, I can sell. So we're driving down the highway and one of the guys says, um, he said, so how hard is it to get like zoning permits and everything? And my first response is, if you know the right people, we can get it. You know what she says? Well, you know, we just had people that just had lost that land because they couldn't get one. <laughs> I'm like, Michelle. So I'm looking at it. I don't say anything. So we get back to the office. The people never call us because now they can't. Let's try to get them hooked and we'll work it out, figure out how to get it. So I said, Michelle, we have a new pet, new code word. It's sunshine. When I need you to stop talking, I'm saying sunshine. You know, and you stop talking. She's like, okay. So she's crying at the, at the, the fireplace. I was like, sunshine, you're fine. Like, you, I know you did nothing wrong. They charged her with kingpin, the same they charged me with. So you were charged on the federal level as kingpin? It was federal charges? First. Yeah. So my attorney comes down. He sees it on TV. It's all over TV. I don't even get a phone call. Now, I'm banging a chick that works in the process in the sheriff's department. You understand? Like, I'm banging the cop's wife that was head of the investigation. And I didn't know it. He, he didn't know it because the people listening on phone calls couldn't tell him because then he'd tell her. So I had a whole lot of shit going on on the outside that nobody knew about, you know? So <clears throat> they arrest her, they charge her kingpin and her bail is $250,000. This bitch, never, she's never done anything wrong in her life. She doesn't even speak. But they think she knows more about me because we talk so much. They're putting the pressure on her. She never folds. Doesn't say a word, nothing. They put a script in front of her, she wouldn't even read it. She has a she had a very wealthy, luckily friend, family friend that came and brought two hundred fifty thousand cash and got her out that same day. But in the meantime, her ex husband came, took her kid. He moved thirty minutes away. She, you know, so next year, she would drive down three times a day to see her kid. You know, and she loved because of me, and she still never folded. So, <clears throat> going back. I get, I get, they take me to a different county jail. And one of my co defendants was a CO. Okay, so he's in one cell. He's crying. I was like, dude, you didn't do anything. But you sold a couple hundred out back. Shut up. Like, stop being a pussy. We're talking through the, the vents, you know? I'm in Salem County, which is a federal holding and state that, you know, they have it separated. It's like paramilitary. So I don't get a phone call. My attorney sees it on TV because on every news station, like, they got him. We got him. You know, That's huge news for yeah. a small town. Yeah. 35 <laughs> co defendants. I'm, you know, I'm on national news and shit. And um, <clears throat> so he's like, listen, bail's too high. My bail's half a million cash only. He's like, bail's too high. Chill out a couple of days. I'm like, Scotty, I want to be out today. Like, I don't want to wait a couple of days. You know, because this is the first time, like, ever been arrested right, in and jail. It's still, right. And it's still not even like setting in. Like, it, I, I don't think I even, it didn't bother me yet. Like, I wasn't, so he's got work on it. So they, what they do, he goes for a bail reduction the next, two days later. And what they do, they put me to no contact with my co-defendants. So no Michelle, no one. Nobody. So now these are, these are people I talk to every day. These 30 people are like, what do you do? So I was like, all right, no problem. You know, whatever. <clears throat> so 20 something days later, I bet that can't get a bail reduction. I pay 50 grand for a bail bondsman. The first case, the first thing court comes up a couple weeks later and the Fed, the state went after the Fed to get it because powder cocaine and Fed, as you know, is like a sliding scale. First offender, white boy, first offender, 10 year max. Well, with Kingpin, state Kingpin, New Jersey is 25 to life. Wait, so the feds were, there was no, this is The unusual. feds wanted me, but yeah. the state wanted me more because they get a whole lot more time out of me. I'm surprised by so that. Not I got only charged, the feds, yeah. Yeah, no. So the feds max first offense is 10 years. Mm -hmm. State is 25 to life for Kingpin. So how did you not fit into like what some of these other guys were going through? Because I didn't, I didn't, was not cooperating at all. 
No, but like you see, like the guys that got life for cocaine and oh, this and well, that. So listen, so that's what's sitting on. So at that, then I get charged with leader organized crime, okay, and twenty other bullshit charges. So they just just so they can throw shit, they're gonna catch me. So the state gets it. I'm like Scotty, like I don't want. I'd rather do Fed time because then they had the boot camp. I could have been out in like three years, and this is still only a couple months in. I'm ready to negotiate. Like, get me. Listen, I did it. No problem admitting it, you know. But I'm also not gonna give you. So the first offer comes 80 with a 40 from the state. 80 years. 80, hold on. For drugs that people wanted to do and gambling they wanted to do. But the problem was I was giving loans out too. I had so many people that I didn't corroborate who they were. Prison, I mean, one of the prisons, I probably had 30 guards in there where you take loans or put bets in. They had on the phone call because they had all these phone calls and they wanted me to tell who it was. I just, I'm not, no. It was so intricate, the web and everything. Right. So, and I'm not, so, <clears throat> and while I was in, before I got bailed out, I forgot this, I called my daughter's mom, Jeanette, who I was kind of with at that time, but she was my ride or die. I wasn't really with her, but I was, we were cool. Listen, I had hushed me all the time. I said, listen, do me a favor, go on my email, because I wanted them to hear the phone call, because I, and I gave her a bad password, because after five bad passwords, my email deleted, right? That was one of the things back then, like, cause I, that's how I got all my steroids and things with online. So I was like, listen, I'm on the phone. I was like, call, put, here's my email address. Here's my, and I, what I did was I went one down, one up for the password. So I knew after five times, it would delete. She, she knew not to even do it, but they were listening. So they were trying to get in. So they, the cops deleted, the prosecutor actually deleted my email. <laughs> so, so, but you know, these are all things I'm thinking in my head, like this is what, cause I don't want you in my email, you know, cause my steroid guy from Arizona, you know, we're getting ten, twenty thousand dollars a month worth of steroids coming in. Let's whoever we can stay out of trouble, keep them out of trouble. They couldn't just get a warrant for the email. <laughs> they could have if they got in, it, but they didn't at that time. That wasn't part of it. But I didn't want them getting in. I wanted this. Once it's gone, it was gone. It's yeah. like those iPhones, you know. So she, I just, so I'm out now, and I'm, I went and bought a Lincoln Navigator because they took all my cars. So you get out on bail. Yeah, get on bail. All your assets got seized too. They took my bank accounts that I had, you know, like thirty, forty thousand in the bank. Nothing major. And but I had like legitimate reasons because now I had paychecks. I was getting commission from all the real estate. And then I was selling you're selling one or two houses a week. By then, you know, it's just insane. That's when the market was sick. So I had like legitimate reasons, but they still took they didn't care. They took they took my cars. So when I bought a, a navigator, like just to like shovel up their ass. Because I, I still wasn't worried. Cause like, what? You, listen, my first time. Like, you didn't get any drugs. You got a phone call, and I think my guys are good. Like, you know, I'm thinking. So it's about a month goes by, and you know, we're, I don't hear a lot. And all of a sudden, I'm at the gas station, and I see feds coming down and state police. I'm like, they're coming over, and I, so I walk to the payphone because I'm gonna call my dad at this time. Like, this is. I think they're coming to get me again. And I'm scared to death to use my phone, cell phone. I got a phone, they freeze, but like, what did I do now? At like, the gas station. Yeah, at the, like, what the, what, what could I possibly have done? They, they arrested me on a fourth degree tamper with evidence charge because of the, I told them to delete my email mm -hmm. with a $200,000 cash only bail for a fourth degree charge. This is a month later. A month later. So what they're doing now, they're trying to break me. Yeah. So I get, and, this, and I have 10,000 in the truck because at that time I just started going to play poker down Lang City just to like, because I, out of the Borgata, when the Borgata started, I was running the book down there. Like that was the best place to take bets because all these people come in, they bet what are playing cards. I take the bet and the game was over. He's like, won or lost, you know, super simple. <clears throat> so I had cash on me. They took the truck, they took the cash, did all that. So then I hired another attorney, um, a local attorney. My, 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 my one guy was out of Philly and because they say, you know, hire local. They get state charged, but oh, I can get them dropped down, blah, blah, blah. So Jamal is one of my co-defendants. Um, he's the other guy that got a kingpin charge. He was the junior black mafia, but he we didn't do business together. It just tied in. Yeah. Just because we play ball together, we, you know, we, we share together, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> the newspaper comes out that Rosetti's testifying. 
And who's Rosetti and all the this? kid that he's my right hand dude. He was my number one guy that I was going to give the whole drug business to. And why would you just give him the business? Well, this is before I was giving because he's just there. I didn't want it. Like I said, that's when you know I wanted to just do gambling and real estate. I didn't want anything to do with drugs anymore. Like, listen, I made it. Thirty two. This is yours. <laughs> so he flips on everyone. Just can't hold water, right? But they put it in the newspaper, in every newspaper, the local newspaper and the, the Philadelphia newspaper. Why would he do that? So my attorney calls me. He's like, I don't care what you do, but you better take a priest with you everywhere you go because if something happens to Rosetti, it's on you. I don't care. If he has a car crash, it's going to be your fault and you're going to jail for murder. He's like, you need someone with you at all times. He said, they're trying to get you. So I said, I got it, I got it. At this time, I had part of a little bar in Philadelphia, and I'm in my office. Two f big gorillas walk in. I was like, man, what now? You know, like, I'm just trying to do So I'm sitting at my desk, and I'm sitting back, and <clears throat> they come in like, uh, Riley, we got to talk. He's like, all right. Like, you know where? I was like, I've never seen you before in my life. But they're black dudes. He's so like, we're, you know, Jamal, Baba. I was like, okay. Like, Rosetti's testifying. So I saw that. I said, you got to do something about it. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, what? So I said, well, let me, you know, I don't think he's going to. I said, because I paid 20000 for his attorney. And I think his attorney would let me know. Come to find out, Rosetti took the 20000 I gave him, didn't go to the attorney. I told him to, went to another attorney to make a deal the first day. Wow. So. And did you realize the gravity of your situation at that point? That's when it started getting real. Like that you knew you were facing, that you were going to go to prison? Well, the 80, I knew I was going to prison. And the 80 to 40, I said, I'll go to trial for that. Like I'm not, because it, I mean, life is 25. 80 to 40, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. What are your parents saying to you? They're on my side. They're, they, they're, they, listen, my stepdad, I, I talk about, he was there every step of the way. He's like, listen, don't do it. We can do better. Anything you need, I got you. My mother was just crying because she didn't want her kid to go to jail. What about your sister? She, she was a pro officer at the time. She was a pro. <laughs> Married to a cop. She's probably telling you you're a fucking idiot. Well, she always, I mean, she said that my whole life. So I yeah. did, you know, but she, you know, my whole family, they stayed strong. They had my back. They knew I fucked up. Listen, I told them I had, I bought everybody dinner one night and said, listen, I'm sorry. Because I was, I'm kind of like the caretaker of everybody, no matter what. When someone would go wrong, listen, I don't want to hang out, but if something's bad, call me, I'll take care of it and I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, I'm, so that's kind of like my personality. So mom was, you know, mom was upset. Dad was like, you're going to jail. Don't take it in the ass. You know what I mean? Like that kind of shit. So, um, so I was like, I'm not doing 80 to 40. I'm not doing it. And, you know, we're going back and forth. And like I said, and I'm back into my life now. I'm back into right now. And there's no drugs involved, but um, I still got money coming in from real estate because of things I had on contract. So I'm still making some money. They had me tied up. I, it was hard to do anything without them coming at me, you know? Especially now that the state, the, the feds dropped it to the state or gave it to the state. Um, so the prosecutor was just a motherfucker. You know how they, they lie. Like half their shit was lies. So I, I got in trouble September 2nd. I, I was at my bar New Year's Eve and Jamal walks in, comes in, shakes my hand, walks off. Yeah, I mean, no contact, but I didn't initiate the contact, you know? I'm sorry, it was it was December 20th. It wasn't January 1st, December 20th. 2004 or five? 2004. Okay. And how old are you, 32, 33? 32, 32 still, 32. I just got in trouble three months, four months before that. We got in trouble. He, he got out, we all got out. He got out on, he had $500,000 bail. They dropped it to 100, imagine. So he comes to the bar, I shake his hand, that's it. I'm coming home over the bridge, coming back to Jersey and Philly. I get pulled over. And now, if I wasn't being a whore, I was going to pick up this chick to take her back to my condo in Philly at the time. But I was, you know, so I'm going to get, she lives right over the bridge. I get pulled over. I'm like, what's up? State, the drunk driving test. You know, they give me a whole thing. I'm like, it's pouring down rain. I'm like, I'm not, I don't drink. All of a sudden, the cops, come, they come up. Now they want to search the car. Four hours on the side of the road, they're searching the car. I'm like. They know who you are. They right. got to fuck with you. So they let me go. I call her, I'm not coming, I go home. I go back to Jersey, actually, the state of the house in Jersey. Next day, I go down to my, my parents' beach house, or my dad's beach house, and you know, I'm like, this is weird. Like, the truck scratched up, the Navier shirt is scratched up, and the dog jumping on, like, I don't understand. Three weeks, three, three days later, they arrest me again for no violation, bail violation, 
and no contact. And you're not getting back out. So I'm like, well, so now I'm in over Christmas. So I'm like, they set me up. They set that dude up there to shake my hand. So he was working with them too. He had to be. Because what else are you stopping there? Shake my hand. Hey, we're going to be all right. The, how did cops get pictured that if you didn't tell me you're coming there? That where they were just watching you. And they, they were probably watching me because I went, the judge wanted to keep me in, or the prosecutor wanted me to stay in Jersey. The judge said, he can go to, but that's his business. He works in Pennsylvania. It's right there. You know, we're not going to stop him from that. So I get locked back up again now for a third time, you know, just for dumb shit. So then I'm like, I'm over this. I'm telling my attorney, let's figure out a deal. Because he said, trial's going to be five years away. He said, then we have 18,000 or 16,000 hours of phone calls. We're going to go through every one of them. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing that. And it's going to cost you half a million dollars. And you'd be sitting in jail while this That's is happening. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm out. I get back out. Oh, you, they 30, give you another a, bond. After 30 oh, days, man. they give me back my 50000 plus I had to pay another 25000 to get back out. So I went over Christmas. I was in Christmas and my birthday. I get out the end of January on the same, you know, so they reinstate my bail from the 500000 plus they charge me another 25000 whatever. It was. So I do it. So I'm out. I was like, listen, let's make it happen. So they come with uh, a couple of offers. Like, I can't do it. I'm not going to trial. Listen, I'm not. I, if it wasn't Kingpin, they knew they had me with Kingpin. And Rosetti's telling. So Rosetti, Rosetti got a second degree drug charge, which is the max 10 years. He he spent 60 hours with the cops and did all the told on me and all the people. Your whole operation. And everything. he still got, didn't even get a deal. Same exact thing that he got charged with. Wow. Like, what a fucking idiot, you know? So I call him. So they come back with a 20, a 20 with a five. And what does that mean? So a 20 year sentence with a five year minimum mandatory. So I'm like, now this is, I'm probably out seven months. This whole thing happened seven months ago. So I'm like, man, listen, I can do five years and come home, I'm out. I'm, I'm doing it. Cause I, listen, I'm guilty. Guilty as fuck, I didn't shit my whole life. And so <clears throat> I, I called, they said, they want some money, I said, listen, let them keep the watches, the jewelry, the money. They can keep that, leave me alone. I said, but you gotta make sure Michelle she gets her charge. I'm not doing unless Michelle gets her charge and dropped because she did nothing wrong. And now they're on this girl so bad and she never says a word. Like, so me growing up, listen, loyalty means more than anything. You know, she could just said, she could have read the script because my daughter's mom, my girlfriend, they all read the fucking script. They gave them the, my daughter's mom, who was, you know, like my right hand, they, they, they picked her up one night and said, oh yeah, he had, he had black trash bags full of cash all over the house. And, you know, just, what? And I said, you never saw that. She's like, I know, but that's what they want me to say. I'm like, okay, so let me get in a couple more years because they told you to say that, you know? Yeah. I said, maybe there are brown grocery bags full of cash because when I pay people out, like from the gamble, I'll put it in brown bags and take it to them. She's like, they didn't want that, you know? So Michelle held firm the whole time. So like, you know, she, I had her, you know? So I said, I'm not signing the deal unless I see her deal signed first because they wouldn't even give her a deal. Now her livelihood's on the line because she's a real estate broker. She gets these charges, she loses, that's all she's done her whole life. <clears throat> so they said, all right, we'll, we'll drop the case on Michelle, but you have seven days to make the deal. So it was a 20 year sentence with a five year step. So I do a minimum five years. So 13 years, six, 13 years, six months is the max on 20 year state sentence. So I have this open back door. So I was like, fuck it, give me the papers, I'm signing it. Not, not cooperating. And you saw the video, like I just sat there and he, you know, the prosecutor's like, since, since high school, Mr. Riley has been selling drugs, which was true. So you got me, I mean, you know, and, but he still wanted like hammer you. I made a deal. Like I'm taking a 20 year sentence for something I should be, I should have a five year sentence for just to get everybody clear. Like that way everybody's over with, because they're sending like, they would send letters to everybody. They listen to phone calls and like, you know, I had a lot of Back then, I'm running, I'm running through these bitches all, you know, like it was just bad. Yeah. They all, half of them got boyfriends. Like, this is going to get worse. The longer I wait, the more they're doing on the back end to get. So, you want to get it over with? Get, listen, I'm still young. My kids are going to be young five years. <clears throat> so, and I didn't really know the whole thing. And that's what, this is awesome what you're doing here because if it teaches people, it, not that, it, hopefully they stay out of trouble, but I didn't know at that time, like, what I should have done prior or should have known. Like, I should have known that. Five years is not guaranteed. You know, like you're not guaranteed to get out in five years. So I <clears throat> so I get I get sent, I go to sentencing. 
And in prior, I pay the county. I know guys in there, so I pay them 10000 to make sure I get to state right away because I'm not waiting a year. Sometimes you sit in county for a year. And that's the worst. County's the worst. The worst, <laughs> right? And I want my own clothes. So I pay, I leave a duffel bag the day before I go in. They you self surrendered to prison. I, well, I, after one sentence, yeah, I walked in right, they, you know, to, to court, into the court, but I already had everything ready in the county for me. And I knew I was getting out right away. I was getting the right to sentence. However, before I go to sentencing, <clears throat> right before that video, the double doors, they come and say, listen, do you want to tell on your dad? Tell my dad. So I said, what do you mean to say? Like, tell him for what? Well, tell him, I, we need you to write here, and they had this whole statement that he does something with his trust fund, his attorney trust fund, and this and that, and we'll cut you down to three years. You hey, listen, my dad's, I'm not doing that anyhow. No. So are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. So I walk in, that's when I was like, Dum, fuck you. you know, with the thumbs up. But I could have, you know, listen, I could have just given up there. But again, what my dad didn't do anything to me to put him in there. He's not going to make it. Like he's, you know, he's 50 years old at the time. So I go and I get to the county and I'm seeing the guys like, I get my clothes and I had some um, Xanax zipped in the bottom of the shirt. And this is freshly off a 20 year sentence this they is, just gave you. They just gave me 20 year sentence. Yeah. And you're going in here still with the same attitude about hustling. Oh and yeah, this, and we'll make it. They put me in the cell. They put me, so Keith, the kid that told on me, he's in the same cell with me after I just got sentenced. What do you say to him? I'm like, my man, I just said, Keith, what the fuck are you thinking? But what they did was they wanted me to get them there so that I'm not getting out. They just kept giving me. But prior to going in, I took every steroid. I was a monster. I was 312 pounds, probably 16% body fat, neck out the here. And when I was in the county, like, yo, how many years you got? And you got 15 years. Like, I just look like I've been there forever. So you thought it was, it was sick to, that you got this prison sentence? Or... Well, I, I knew what I needed to do. And I also kind of know how to fight. You know, so I was like, I'm be all right, you know, but I had to get Keith out of there. So when the guys that I paid off for the county, they knew he was in there. They hurry up, got him. He stayed in custody, protective custody the whole time he was in prison. So he ended up doing a year, little over a year in PC. Yeah. And, st and told on everybody. He didn't get a better deal. So how much do you think you paid for this whole legal process when you add it all up? Uh, I got at least easy, probably half a million. That's crazy. And you didn't even go to trial and you paid half a million. Between, Imagine if you it went to trial. <laughs> they break you. That's the thing, you know, and, they, and what they take is just, that's their, their game is to take it all back. They don't like people to make money is what it is, the government. And going into prison, how are you doing financially? Do you have money tucked aside or? I have some money put aside. Um, not a lot because like I said, I just kept spending that, you know, I was out of, I couldn't do real estate anymore. I'm spending money. I don't know how long I'm going to prison for with an open sentence of a 20 year or a five year stip. So I'm kind of enjoying life too because this ain't get killed in prison. You don't know. Yeah. So, so um, you're 32, you're jacked, you know, you're jacked up, yeah. you're going into prison. How are guys treating you? What's that look like? So the county, I know a lot of the dudes. So they were all, everything was fine. I get out of county and I still, I don't think it ever even hit me yet. Like what's really happening. Um, you know, that could be just a defense mechanism, but it hit me. So from the county, you go to craft, which is central reception for the state facility. And, Crafts in Trenton. So they take, the, so <clears throat> I'm out of the county in probably less than a week. Cause like I said, I paid to get out of the county. I paid one of the top guys in the county at that time to get out to make sure I got on that list. Cause they said, you're there a year. It's day for day. It's not even, you don't need a good time. So, but they put me in a van. Everybody's going on a bus. I get in a van. A van. Like, what? They got three cars in the front, three cars in the back with me. And like, I'm going to break out or I'm some like, some killer that I'm like, what are we doing? Like, well, we got to take the back road so nobody gets you out. I was like, I'm not trying to run. I don't run. So we pull up the craft and it's now it's cold out. And I they put you in the hallway, they take your clothes off. What? Well, this is when it starts getting real. So we're in balls ass naked in the stairwell, 150 of us, nuts to ass, everybody. I mean, and she's like, I'm like, did I really do this? So now it's starting to get like real. So they bring you up and they put you in 30 guys in the shower and they spray you with bug juice. Bug juice. To kill the lice and everything. Like they just spray you with a fire hose. This is insane. I've never, this is like some yeah. fucking out of the country type no, shit. Yeah, they spray you with this, like this juice, this, this, this was back then. It was like this brown liquid. It's not a shower and they take you out 
no towel they give you to put your paper suit on to kill like lice, whatever you might have before you go, you know, on into the prisons. And craft is where they they classify you. Well, since I had organized crime charge and I had, they took the kingpin to a first degree. So I pled instead of getting rid of kingpin, they went to first degree. You know, over eight ounces, whatever. I don't remember what it is, but so <clears throat> I had I couldn't get status. I I already had to start at medium security right away. You know, that was the minimum security they give me is medium. So there's in Cumberland County, there's three prisons, state prisons. So I'm like, oh, no problem, I'll be home. So they send me to the furthest one in my county, though, like which is probably 20 minutes from my house. But I still know a ton of dudes. So I'm like, I'm going to be good here. You know, like, well, <clears throat> I'm there four days, probably four days. I get a call three in the morning, knock on the door, come with us. You're leaving. I'm like, what? The captain says, you know more people than I do. You're a threat. That's literally what they did to me, too. Yeah, so I'm like, a threat? What, the f- what do you mean? I'm like... Because, listen, I just had got to the gym, like, you know, I'm still working because I'm going to be a big, you know, like, I don't want to lose size because, you know, you see, you hear the stories. So <clears throat> they say you're going to Southwoods, which is also in Cumberland County, in my, in my area. So he pulled a van up there. Lieutenant comes out. He's like, he's not allowed here. What do you mean? Well, do you want to tell us who the 31 people that called you from here are? You know, what cops were? I was like, oh, no, I don't know. So, I, he's go- so now I'm like, so he sent me to Riverfront. The guy through diesel therapy right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know how those things, they're sick. So I go to Camp Riverfront, which was in Camden at the time. They tore it down now. So that's a medium security, but there's a lot of lifers in there. <clears throat> so I get there, and this I'm probably, I'm probably a month in now. Because at Kraft, they just put you I'm, – so at Kraft, I'm losing a pound a day because they only give you 1,200 calories. Like you don't eat. There's no commissary. You're just in – you get an hour outside – they freeze your dick off because they leave the windows open and you just have a sheet. Like they just, they make it rough and craft. <clears throat> so I get to Riverfront and again, I don't know how to move. I mean, I, you, you know how to move from being on the street, but you don't know how to move in prison, you know? So I'm like, listen, I call people, I need money on my books, blah, 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 you know, and I, I don't know what to do. So I, I get there and I'm there probably six weeks and I get a job as a teacher's aide. Teacher's aid. Right. Wow. Because I'm the only one, you know, listen, you know, 80% of them, they can't even read or write in there. You know what I mean? And, and I'm trying to, te- I'm, you know, I'm helping people. I'm still cool, you know, and I, and I, I meet some dudes. So, but I'm, I'm a, people are attracted to me kind of like in a leadership role almost and just, just not even knowing me, but just seeing how. So I have all the, I know the guys from Camden, like the, the blood guys, like they knew me. So I was, I was okay with everybody kind of, you know. I had a couple of biker gang guys, one of the sergeant arms in there that I knew that I was selling steroids to. So like I had people that I was okay, you know, so there, I had people taking care of me right away. So as I'm riverfront, I meet a guy named Mike and I'm probably in there six months now. So I'm a teacher's aide still. So I have this teacher, she's cool. She's a civilian, you know, and I'm just her right hand, you know, helping these guys read first grade English. So in the meantime, I, I meet this guy, Mike, and he's like, this is what you gotta do. He said, you got to be a Jew. A Jew? I said, a Jew. He's like, do you know what they do? He worked in the kitchen. He said, you don't know, you don't want to eat the food that we give you from the mess hall. Like, you don't. He said, you got to be a Jew because that way you get the kosher meals and they're sealed. I was like, well, how do I become a Jew? You know? So he's like, you got to fill out. So I fill out this, I fill out this, um, you know, one of the forms, like, I want to see the rabbi. So the rabbi calls me in. He's like, what are you doing? I said, well, I want to be Jewish. He's like, but you're not. I said, I think my mom is because she's cheap as hell. I, this is God's honest truth. I said this to her. He's like, that doesn't make her Jewish. I said, you send her a card. She'll donate. He's like, you're Jewish. So I got the kosher meals. This is exactly how federal prison works, too. We would always sign up. To, yeah. You go to see the rabbi. They say you're Jewish and you get the better meals. You get the better meals. So that was the first key of everything. And that kind of made you realize how you can move around, how money can influence the prison system. My mother still gets cards for donations every year. That's the Jew, yeah, you know the, the people with money in prison are the ones that do it the best. Oh well, the, and see, a river, the problem with Riverfront is the there was a lot of sex offenders, and they they ran the prison because they were telling them. So they weren't treating bad, the sex offenders. They weren't no, treated bad. They were protected by the cops. 
they were they the one told everybody how his prison was running. So in the meantime, I'm learning like these bloods are idiots. Like they could run the whole system instead of killing each other, you know. And at that time, I'm like, well, football season's starting. I know a little bit about gambling. Yeah, what became your prison hustle? Football tickets. And how much money were you making oh. running the ticket? And how would people pay you? So it's cigarettes, you know, cigarettes and food. You know, they get, you know, at that time, the like buglers were a dollar, Newports were six bucks. And I probably had 500 packs of Newports between different cells. But I was on the radar of, of a Lieutenant Kershaw. So I was in the KOP line. So I would get, I got Benadryl, like to go to sleep. Like, you know, they told me how to move. You know what I mean? Like everybody like, go get Benadryl. Say you got allergies, they'll give it to you at night, you'll go to sleep. I say, all right. So I'm in the KOP line getting my Benadryl for the week or whatever. And he comes up behind me and slams me on the ground. This sergeant or lieutenant was lieutenant at the time. He's a big dude. I'm like, all right. I let it go, you know, but he was on me. Like he wanted to know about the football. Well, there's three pods and I, I'm running football in every pod. They're throwing racquetballs with the tickets over to me and I got somebody else running them. So I would pay, at that time, I'd find the brokest person on the, on, the, on the thing and he'd write real small and do the circle of football, you know, four, five, six, eight, ten picks. Listen, you don't win. And when they did win, you got paid right away. But it was, I mean, so my canteen was huge. You did it for fun. I did yeah. it for fun. Yeah. But, and it's just, listen, it kept me on my toes. So I would get the kosher meals. Then, <clears throat> at that time, I was like a teacher's aide. So she would be so now now so I'm real cool with her. So she'd bring me food. Real listen, a real pen meant a lot back then. Instead of those little bend, you know, flexible. So I'd get like real pens, you know, from her. She was cool. So <clears throat> I get I'm probably there about a year. I get locked up in the shoe because so internal affairs comes to me. This guy. So internal affairs had I had during my first six months. The, they, the cops kept coming, the feds kept coming because they wanted me to tell on cops that I dealt with. And they're like, listen, we can help you out. Now. I was like, motherfucker, I got my sentence. You're not cutting my sentence now. We'll guarantee. Um, tell us about this guy. Tell us about this guy. I was like, listen, this shit's over. Like, you know, there's, no, there's nothing here. But they would still come get me, you know, at least once a month to like just talk to me. See if they broke me. So <clears throat> another year and a half, they locked me up. I was like, what do I do now? You know, because I know they didn't get football tickets. I, you're allowed 10 Newports. I only had 10 Newports in mind. My bunkie had 10 Newports. Like, I always took care of my, my bunk, you know, it was always good. And they say, um, you're fucking the teacher. Were you? Well, not where they said I was. Wait, wait, wait. You <laughs> hooked up with a prison guard. Not a guard. She was a civilian school teacher. She was still working in the prison. Oh, though. yeah. How does this happen? How does so, that go down? She, it's so weird. Her, her husband at the time actually was getting loans still from my guys and I knew. So, I, you know, I still had connections on the outside and connections. So we were on Canada, so we weren't far from, everybody I knew still knew a lot of the cops and stuff. And so just listen, after like a year and a half, she's like the bad boy status, you know, she's like. So you're having sex in prison <laughs> yeah. and she's risking her uh, relationship, her marriage. Her marriage, her job. So they say, I said, I didn't, I, I deny it to I, internal affairs, like it wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking. We got your DNA on the desk. Right away, I know they're lying because I ain't never fucked on that desk. Well, they're not swabbing for DNA in the prison. But so many people tell because they're jealous of the job. You know, like I think I was getting two thirty-five a day instead of ninety cents or whatever. You know how the different jobs pay different rates. Yeah. So I had a good job, not even, but it was just you know like I could kind of had access to the prison. You know, being in, in the education department, the whole thing. So I told. So I was in lockup seventy-one days because I wouldn't cooperate under investigation. It's crazy what they could do to you when you get sweeped in. I think investigation prison's worse than worse than investigation real life. <laughs> but listen, I look at out three. I got three showers in seventy one days. Yeah, it's crazy. They, so no, no Bible, no sheets in the bunk. So I was fine for the first probably like thirty days. Then I'm starting to count the blocks, the dimples in the cinder blocks. That because there's nothing. Else. What do you do? Mm. Like I tried to read the Bible, it just didn't work. I got to page two. I was like, I can't listen. I can't read this. I, I use it as a pillow. Like yeah. I, I had that's what because I didn't have anything. So seventy the seventy first day, I actually sent a letter to my stepdad about fifty days. Like I don't know how long so long I can do this. Like I've never thought about suicide in my life because I was always my mentality is tomorrow's another day. No matter how bad today is, I'll be all right tomorrow. Which is a great mentality. Yeah. Because you know, and, and, like 
my mother, she, so my mother, you know, she was, she worked for Red Cross, but she was a drug counselor. She went to college, she got her PhD in psychology, but she never did, you know, like, but my mentality is, you know, like all this mental, it's all, it's, it's in your head. Like if you're weak, you're weak. If you're not, you can figure it out. So, um, around day 50, I was like, Rick, you know, he's my best friend. I mean, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Not three days later, he sends Robin Lord, who was a big hotshot attorney from Trenton area down. She told me, we're going to get you out of here. Like, Cause it's not, this I had three showers in seven, in 50 days at that time. It's insane. So <clears throat> the internal affairs, are you ready to tell you? I said, I don't want you to tell. I never did it. You know? So 71st morning, you're leaving. I was like, all right, where am I going? You know, like I'm finally getting out. Like, am I going back? Can't be here. I, I watched her get walked out by the cops. You know, this is when it first happened. So they said, uh, you're going to Northern State. I was like, fuck. What's Northern State? The worst prison, one of the worst prisons around. And, and this is Pennsylvania, New Jersey? No, New Jersey. It's New all Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Omar Broadway actually snuck a phone in Northern State. And vid like, if you, if you Google Northern State Prison, there's a guy in there that made a movie, an inmate in Northern State. So I'm like, nobody, listen, the cops didn't want to go to Northern State. I didn't want to go to Northern State. Like, that's the last thing I wanted to hear because that's the worst, like, that. you know, I mean, Mid-State is like, even though it's a bunch of sex offenders, it's just a camp. Yeah. So I got like two, year and a half, two years in, I'm like, no, I'm not going to Northern State. So I get on the bus and we stop at Trenton. Okay, so we, I go in Trenton. No, I'm sorry, Rawway. Went to Rawway, and where they made the video, the movie, like the the Sylvester Sloan movie, they had the track and stuff, and the it's scary, like it's just a scary. Now I don't get scared easy, but you just smell death in this place. But it was run by the inmates, so it was they were like jailing for it, like it wasn't snitch, it was like real dudes like running a jail, which I appreciate that, you know. So I was there two days, and they're like, yeah, your the bus is going now to Northern State. So this it's all they're killing every day in Northern State. The cops don't want to work there. The inmates cry there. So I'm like, okay. So I have a bunch of shit put together, like my radios, you know. So I know they're gonna steal all my stuff. That's the first thing, like the cops take everything you have. So my, I'm in the back of the van and we're gonna, I was like, I'm just gonna walk in. I'm gonna find the biggest, blackest dude I can find and punch him right in the fucking face. That's your plan. That's my plan. Because then they gotta get me out of there. I'm a, the biggest blood I can find, I'm gonna walk up to him and drop him. And do you do that? So I get the reception. And I have, you know, four or five of the totes, the clear totes, you know, full of shit. I get back one back. So I, I, they say, okay, you go to A unit, which was your reception there. I walk in, it's quiet. I'm like, what the fuck? Joey Massimino, the unbarsed the Philly mobs, two New York mobsters are there. Riley, get over here. I say, fuck yeah, I hit the lottery. Cause they all knew you. They knew me and they're running the whole, they're running the place. Yeah. Everybody else is in the cell, they're, they're out, they're eating. So you're good now. I'm good. So I'm good for about two weeks in a unit and the feds found out that Mousy and I were together. They put me in gang unit. So you go to this gang unit in a maximum security prison. And let me tell you something, no bueno. Are you asked to join a gang as a white guy? Uh, How does that work? A few times, but I, you know, I, I have the, I never, when I first got to Riverfront, I had to choke a dude out my second day there, a Muslim. Um, Big Muslim, it was like everybody was scared of him. I choked him out in seven seconds. And you earned respect for that or? Nobody talked, nobody even stepped wrong after that. Um, so when I got to Northern State, I, I was always cool with the head dudes of all the sets. You know, I, they would come to me, I'd come to them, but I always had something. Like I was always making money. Was, you know, there was always a way, and listen, I'll put you down. Um, so I hate gangs. I think they're the dumbest thing ever. Cause they, you know, they like said one blood to kill another blood because they set their own. So I, I'm trying to talk to the head dudes. Listen, let's get together. If all the bloods work together, the, there's not a, a cop that can stop you and you'll run the whole place. They didn't want to do that. You know, like sex, money, murder wants to kill this one. It, you're stupid. You're trying to operate it like a business. And <laughs> listen, I'm trying to make life easy and they're, you know, they just want to kill each other. So, but <clears throat> never, I never got asked, I saw, I mean, I saw 80% of the guys I ever talked to joined either like the Nietas or the Latin Kings or the Bloods or the Crips. And, you know, the Crips and the Bloods were fighting every day and the Latin Kings and the Bloods were fighting every day. I mean, they were dying. One guy a day was dying. What was the most violent thing you saw? In Riverfront, I saw a guy get his eye poked out. 
With a shank. With a pen. With a pen. With a pen. Popped it right out on the steps. So I fucking bounced right past me. I saw a guy get raped in the shower. It was probably one of the worst things I've ever seen. Like, it was bad. Three dudes just absolutely murdered this dude. Um, in Northern State, I saw a dude get his head cut in half by a 45-pound weight. That's when they took the weights out. He was benching, and this dude came up behind him with a 45-pound and just smashed it right across his head. I mean, just – and he just leaped. They put us on the ground for 40 minutes. And that's when they took the free weights out of the, of the jails. So there was a, a lot of that. I mean, I saw a bunch of fights. I saw – a dude get killed because he had a blackberry in his ass and they wanted his phone. And now, they, they took the blackberry that wide, they put their hand there and pulled the fucking phone out. Now you're a big guy. What would have happened if you went to help someone like the guy in the shower or anything? Are you allowed to get involved in that? I, I, I didn't, man. If, if I, I did a few times with guys that didn't deserve it. Um, I saw a guy, a Muslim kid. I, my, I think my biggest problem was probably with the Muslims because of just their... Uh, like if I if one of my bunkers is a Muslim, he always turn my pictures around and do like weird shit. I'm like, just don't touch my shit. We can get along. Don't touch my shit. You know what I mean? Um, but like, I would shower with my boots on. Like I took a shower for two years with boots. You showered with your oh, boots. Oh yeah. On. Why? Because that's when they get you. So if somebody's going to get me, so there's thirty dudes in the shower. If they're going to get you, it's in the shower. So I have my boots on. I'm ready. You know, I was always ready just in case. And you had a shank on you too. All the time. You know. And the thing is, I I I can. I was a big dude, so that helped. If I was a little dude, they would have got me too. Just, you know, it's just, that's the way nature is. However, I always had a phone. So in, when I got to Northern State, now I know all these kids. The cops are bloods too. They're all from the street. You know, they're all from, you know, Newark. It's in Newark. So I was like, all right, let me figure this out. Yeah, you how know? do you get a cell phone in prison? So I would, my mom or, and my stepfather would come one day, and I'd have another girl come another day, okay? She would have 400 bucks every week wrapped up, twisted real light, wrapped up in saran wrap. She put her mouth, I kiss her, put her mouth, she just boofed it, right? As I'm in line to go in there, I get out and give it to the cop. He, I had a new phone every week in Northern State. Because it kept getting popped or? No, I, well, they'd run down once a week and you'd flush them or whatever, or you know, somebody get it. But the cops were, I mean, every cop was dirty. They ran down one time, the feds ran down Northern State um, minimum unit and got two and a half pounds of weed out of there. How, how much, um, how are you charging a phone? How does that work? It's batteries. Oh, so, so batteries. Yeah, okay. so that you'd get, to, you'd order batteries off canteen. Um, and listen, these dudes, and, and that's the thing, like a lot of the prisoners, if they would put their shit to the right thing, they could do a lot. Because, I mean, I couldn't figure out how to charge a phone. And they had, they had two batteries together with the wire. They take a wire and charge a phone. I mean, and put it on a pillow and charge, you know, full charge. So they, you know, they did that. You had, you know, the artists, as you know, like draw on and shit like that all the time. Like, so there's a lot of talent there. I mean, listen, there's the worst of the worst, but there's also some talent there, you know? And there's 9 million ways to make money too. There's, I mean, that's the thing. There's always money there. Yeah. There's money on the street, you know? I saw a lot of guys get messed up because they would, would buy like, you know, heroin or things and not be able to pay. And that's the thing, you know, and, and the respect thing is, you know, that, that makes me laugh is they, they all want this respect when you're, you know, when you're having their, excuse me, motherfucker you weren't like that on the street get out of here with that fake shit you know what i mean um but that you know it's just and the same thing like jobs so the jobs everybody they would cry if they wouldn't get on the street to work you never had a job in your life my man now all of a sudden you get mad because it's raining because they don't take you out on the job yeah like come on like you know so <clears throat> northern state was was rough but it got easier as soon as you got you know it moved moved the right way so I went from gang unit for about a year to the men camp. So that's when you get ready to go to halfway house. <clears throat> and hooked up with this white cop. A girl? No, guy. Oh, okay, okay. Just hooked up me like we were cool. Um, they called him Johnny USA. He's, you know, he had like the, the cowboy hat on, you know, like he's just- he's There's just, always that one cool prison yeah, cop. Yeah, there. yeah, you know, and, and he kind of knew. So he ran the uh, Totowa, uh, which was a, a mental health facility. He, he ran that detail. So he's like, you're coming to work with me. I was like, all right. So we drove like 20 minutes. We ate good because they, we ate the same food they ate every lunch, you know, the whole thing. And I was the A man. So I sat in the front. I, if I got somebody came in, I liked a couple guys that ran a book out of the Philly. Um, they got they got sent there uh, doing another guy, Jack. So I got them on the detail. Like, you know, you can do things like that. And he was crooked as fuck. I mean, you know, the cop was, he was, he was crooked. But they all, at the end of the day, they all are, you know. But <clears throat> the phones, 
I would pay 400 bucks a week for a phone. There'd be a phone put the next day in my cell. So you're living life outside before prison and then you go to prison, you figure out a way to survive yeah, and live life. You, you have to because- You, you know, adapt. Yeah, you, ha you have to. If not, you're dead. Now, how long did you end up doing? I did five years in a day. So out of this 20 year sentence, you did five years in yeah, a day? Yeah, I had five years step. So I, I, I get, so I get to, I get, I go from menu to the halfway house. So the halfway house is stress. Because you go, you can go on the street, you get a job, but you got to take the bus. And there's so many restrictions. I, I, and listen, they lock, you now that you smelled a little bit of freedom, you don't want to go back. It, and it's worse in prison, I think, the halfway house. A hundred percent. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's where the people are, they're not even cops, they're civilians working there. And they think they're cops. <laughs> and then you're like, and they're talking to you any kind of way. I'm thinking like, but they got power because they could send you back. Be, so what do you do? Huh? You, you have to hey, follow. You, you got to. I, What's your mindset at that time? I want to get home. So, so I, <clears throat> at that time, I, I get out and I get out, I go to, I go to the halfway house and um, I think it was uh, 12 months before my sentence, you know, my five years up. So I was in that time. I hadn't go to parole yet. And they're like, uh, I never did drugs. So I didn't have to do any like the program and right? like, I would have probably killed myself. If I had to go through those programs, you know, like the, the it's just bad. Like those drug treatment things that they do. So I was on the other side and <clears throat> it was, they said there's more stress because you don't want to do anything wrong because you don't know what you can do wrong to get sent back. And then you're done. You got to go through a whole process to get here again. Yeah. So I knew that in like six weeks, you can start doing one day a night, you stay home. You know, so I'm like, that's all I want. You know what I mean? Like, let me get home now. So I, I got to that point and then my parole is come, my parole hearing is coming up. Well, prior, I got to go to the psych. Okay, so listen, I'm good with people. And I know what you want to, I, listen, I know what I'm supposed to say, I know what I want to say, and what I'm supposed to say. Like, I know the difference, you know, and so <clears throat> there is, she's asking a question, and I know what I'm supposed to say, so I tell her. And I, I, I fucked up. She actually said, I don't like you. She said, because we took an IQ test. She said, you're, you scored 18 points higher than my IQ. And I, I work for, you know, I have a PhD. You could have done anything you wanted, right? Cause she interviewed me when we first went in too. And she said, you're here now still. And I said, so what are you gonna do when you get out? I said, well, you know, I get back into real estate, you know? And she's like, for what? I said, Man, you know, someone make deals, but I fucked up. I should have thought. And then as soon as I said, I was like, damn it. That means I'm not, I still wanna make these deals. I'll still sell drugs. No. Like that's what she's thinking. So her, Recommendation means a lot. So I switched this conversation right around. By the end of the conversation, I'm talking to her about real estate and how to make money in it. So I'm like, I think I got her. You know, like, I think I did it. So I, <clears throat> you go to the, the gymnasium in this other prison and there's 20 people, you know, waiting to go talk to the pro board. It's two old white guys and an old Spanish lady. Well, these dudes are gonna look at me like, you're staying here because you're a fucking scumbag. You know what I mean? Like you could have done it, you know, they, you didn't pay your time back. And um, one of the things was like the prosecutor was overzealous of trying to get me. Like he wanted to set an example because, you know, a white guy shouldn't be doing that, you know, that kind of thing. So I know I didn't get a good, but I got a good letter from some different politicians and things, you know. So I'm sitting there and I'm, <clears throat> they're, they're asking me, the, the other guys are like, you know, what are you gonna do? I was like, real estate, you said, well, you know, do you have that thrilled so you don't make these deals? I was like, nah, you know, I just like helping people. You know, like I wanted them to get their house. You know, I eventually went through this and, you know, I gave them. So they say, leave. Now, the problem is in the halfway house, if you get a hit, you go back to prison. And like I said, my sentence went from this is I was in four and a half years. I can do another eight years in prison because my max was 13 years, six months. No. So I can do eight or nine more years. I'm like, Fuck. they're going to give me a 24 month hit. Like that's so the first seven guys come out crying because they got hits. I'm like, no shot. I'm not I'm not getting they come back in, he said, it's your lucky day. I said, I'm staying halfway house, you're gonna go home. I was like, oh, my man. So <clears throat> I don't tell anybody I'm going home because I don't want them doing something dumb. You know, like I said. Yeah, people fuck off when, you know. Come up, hit you, yeah. and you know, even, so I don't tell anybody. I call, I call my mom and tell her, listen, you know, I'm coming home, so and so and so and so. So she's excited. So now I still have though, five months left in the halfway house. And I, because you get sent back, that whole thing is gone, or four months. Well, it's a snowstorm. 
and the bus doesn't come from my job when I was working. So, but, but <laughs> let me run this back. The halfway house, they take half your paycheck. To, yeah, to pay for the halfway house. Right. Yeah. Well, I, my boss at the time, uh, he took out my child support, which was, let's say it's $210 and left me a check of $38. So they didn't get any money from me, the halfway house. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's ways around yeah, it. Yeah, you're not getting shit, you know. So <clears throat> there's like four months that I missed the bus because they didn't come as a snowstorm. So I call them. They're not answering. We're coming to get you. I was like, well, another bus was coming to half hour. The last thing you want them is picking you up because they're not taking you back to the halfway house. They're taking you to the jail. So I get in there. And I'm this. that's probably the most nervous I've been because I just didn't want to go back so bad that when I... As I'm sitting in the room, I'm like, I just, what do you do? I can't buy them off, you know, because they don't, they look at me like I'm an asshole anyhow. I missed the bus, even though it wasn't my fault, but they don't care about that. So they come in there and said, it's your lucky day. We called the bus and they didn't get there. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, they you didn't know, realize you weren't lying. Yeah. So and they said, I, I went through and I, in the last few, probably the last month, I didn't even want to go home. Like, I just want to, just, I don't want to do anything. I want to stay here walk around the halfway house for, you know, all hours and just, because I don't want anything to happen, you know, at that time. So that's probably when I got anxious, you know, at that time. Before that, it got to like Groundhog Day. So when I was in prison, it was the same thing every day. Did you genuinely believe that you weren't going to do any crime anymore and you were done? Or did you have an urge that you want to get back into drugs? Because that was your whole life at that yeah, point. No, listen, once they called me, the game was over to me. 100%. So you, you, you have the mentality, you have to try it until it's over. Like yeah. you got to take a risk. Yeah. So you get out. What do you get into? Do you work for someone else? Yes. Yeah, so, well, I get, I get right. Listen, I, I don't stop. So I came home. How old are you? 37 about? 38? 30, 38. Yep. 38. You, I come home. You have kids. You, I get my kids. Yeah. So they're coming around. They're old. But I immediately get back into real estate. So Michelle brings me. So I, I don't talk to Michelle while I'm in prison. I do it because she sends me some food packages. You know, twice a year you get food packages. But I didn't talk to her a lot. You know, the co-defendant. But she, I, I, so I call her from the halfway house. It's a funny story. And I was like, um, I want to, what were they, iPad, iPods at that time? Yeah, the iPod Nano. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, was like, I, said, I was like, Michelle, I want an iPod. You know, and I just said, I'm at the halfway house. I'm start coming home. I'm, I'm going to check with the attorney, make sure I'm allowed to see you, but I want to see you, you know, that kind of thing. So she's like, I, she's like, okay. She's like, well, if you want an iPod, are you ready to marry a fat chick? Right? And she wasn't fat, but she's, I was like, well, yeah, you know, like, End up, I'm 15 years later, I was still with her. Like, I was with her 15 years after I came home. Yeah. But <clears throat> she, um, so I, I got into real estate and back right into real estate. I went to get my real estate license. I passed the test. Didn't even, I passed the test, got three wrong. And you were allowed to have a real estate license? I was supposed to. Okay. But they stopped me. Because of the felony? Yes. Which has nothing to do with any of the guidelines. I, there was nothing I shouldn't, I should have had it. But I didn't. So I said, you know, let me get into construction. Did you have money to to start anything, or were you started home, from scratch? I started. I, when I came home, some guys gave me some money, um, not a lot, but enough to get going. Um, to buy, I bought a rental. First thing I did, um, and it's because I listen, I didn't take anybody else with me. When I went down, it was me. I mean, I had thirty five co defendants that went down because of me. So they kicked you back. So so the guys that I could have murdered and buried of all of them, you know, like they could all been in jail forever. I just didn't listen. Do you think your life would be different now, though, if you didn't have that? Because not, a, and there's not some guys that could come home and just have money waiting yeah, for them so like that. I had a bag. Um, it definitely helped, but again, I have a drive where listen, until I get, I'm going to start. So you know, I saw what it could be, um, and and I, I flipped the house. So I flipped the house when I was in the halfway house with my with Michelle. We bought and sold. I made like fifteen thousand. I just did a quick deal. I paid off my back child support with that. Didn't so I didn't keep any of that money. But I had Michelle, which she's very strong, very supportive of me, helped uh, tremendously. I also hooked up with a, a friend of mine that was there that was in the real estate a little bit, and he helped me get on my feet. But the whole time I was in prison, I kept my credit right. You know, my accountant still did all my work. My attorney, you know, had some money that would pay what I needed to pay. Just you know, so I still came home with a seven forty credit score, and they don't look. They don't ask you for prison for credit cards and things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's interesting. People ask me all the time. My credit's not affected by my criminal history no, whatsoever. No. Now, I, I do run into issues where I have to like write a letter of what happened. I don't anymore because of you know where I am. But when I first got back into it, you know, the smaller banks like 
hold on, they Google me and they see fucking pictures of me all over the internet. Like, but your charges are so stupid. You didn't hurt anyone. I, it was drugs, you know? People look at, you know, listen, uh -huh. the older, they're like, oh, well, you know, he's a, he's a felon. So that's it. When I meet girls, or, listen, I'm a convicted felon. You should better be scared. <laughs> that's <laughs> what you tell me. That's what I tell you. I had people like that, though. You put that on a Tinder bio, man, they're, they're flooded towards you. <laughs> no, no. That's what's in, man. Yeah, they no, love listen, the bad boys. Yeah, they do. And the thing yeah. is, um, you know, I, I have, it's still to this day, though, I deal with, um, people are against it, you know. I I, I went out with a <clears throat> I went out with a, a girl, just just not even anything special. She, I've known her my whole life, and I know her father. And she, I was I was taking her to. We're so good. Like she she was down there. She's a traveling nurse, and she wanted to go to like somewhere in Philly. I was like, I'll take you, no problem. Mm -hmm. So she told her dad that we were going, and this is what he says. I had to block her because she got crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it. it's always the parents that the, are the issue well, when, I was, rather than the girl. Exactly. So I was actually friends with her father. Mm -hmm. I bought his house when he was getting divorced. He was going to lose it to a uh, sheriff's sale and I bought it. And it's the house I own. And what happens? And it's like, he, you know, he was this, uh, when I was growing up, he was this big, you know, this, this, he was a doctor. He had the Rolexes and sh now he's here and I'm here. So now he's got the, you know, the, the problem, but it says, she said, uh, uh, where is it? Let me see. I, don't know, I can't find it. But <laughs> I don't feel like going. But it said, my, my, dad, uh, my dad said, you're still a drug dealer and be careful. Hold on. I make a million dollars a year. I don't need to sell drugs. I made a million dollars already this year. Profit. I don't need to sell drugs. I didn't make a million dollars profit selling drugs with no stress. Yeah, you know. So <clears throat> when I, when I go back to when I came home, my first uh, I would say my f three years out, I made my first million in real estate profit. And what I was doing, but when I, like I said, I was always in. So Michelle was a very key to that because she owned a real estate office. She helped me get loans. You know, she, um, she anything I needed, she helped me with. And you already had some familiarity with it from I, before prison. Right. So, and, and I flipped houses before. And what I, what I realized was these contractors make more than I am. So what I did, hey, listen, I'm way a contractor. So, so you're in construction, you're I'm in real in construction. estate. So what I went around, I went around and found every job site up and down New Jersey and found the best dudes and put a team together. So then the construction business went crazy in, in 2012 and 13. I mean, it was going nuts. I couldn't even buy houses because we were too busy fixing everybody else's. They were flipping houses, but we're, you know, I made a million too, profit. Yeah. So then I was like, at that time, I was still buying rental properties, you know, because I, I liked the rentals. I, I think I, I thought I liked rentals. I really don't like rentals. I do, but I don't, if that makes sense. Um, so in like in 20, came home in 2010. In 2015, I had um, maybe 25 rentals. And, but I want to get flipped back to flipping all the time. And that's when kind of like my son was, you know, coming into the business. I fired him <laughs> because he wanted to go to the beach instead of work when he was 16 in high school. Yeah. So I was, he's like, I'm going to the beach with my friends. Okay, listen, I'll never tell you what you can or can't do. He tried to go back. I was like, no, we don't need you anymore because I hired somebody else. So Michelle put you on. Michelle helped out tremendously. Michelle is actually a problem. Michelle and I are together. She's my one of my best friends. I would do, people don't realize it. And, and I mean, some people, your viewers probably will, but that meant more to me than anything that she didn't tell and she was still there. She's a, dude, you got to keep her around in well, listen, whatever capacity, man. Well, here's the thing, like, I don't have sex with her or anything like that, but I, my last relationship, I broke up, we broke up because of her. Because of your closeness. Because Yeah, because, you know, I, if she called and needed something, I got her. But some she, people are insecure in, in that sense that listen, you have that, you know? I know, and that's the thing. She's like, why well, never met her? I said, and, you know, she, the, my ex is a gorgeous girl. She's gorgeous. Her family is very well off. She's a great girl. She has a couple of kids, which I didn't ever date another girl with kids because mine are all grown now, but I did. But she just couldn't get over that, like what I did, like, you know, banging all these chicks before. Like, yeah. and Michelle, yeah, I never met Michelle. You could call her right now. Mich I could call Michelle and she would come pick you up if you were broken down. As my, now Michelle and I been together in two years. Like we broke up two, two and a half years ago now, but she, to this day, she still would do that. And people don't realize that that meant, I, she, for my whole life until I die, she'll be okay. Well, there's, there's not that many people like that no, that you meet. And, but, and, she, you know, and, and she she doesn't have that because she's been taking care of her. You know, her parents have money. She never had to. She understands 
loyalty to that 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 part of loyalty if that makes sense and you don't know maybe you guys get back together down the line nah nah you once, don't it's, think? once it's done i'm done really yeah, yeah so yeah but you still keep her in your life so i do but know. it's listen not that i owe her any because i don't owe anybody shit but i'll never forget what she did for me and that meant more mean to like you couldn't get, i don't care if somebody said here's 10 million if you never told me i wouldn't do it do you have any regrets after everything like do you wish you could turn back the clock at all i really don't i would do it again if I knew I was doing five years from what I did in that time, I don't. I I, I don't want other people to do it, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, my regrets now are I've cut people off or lost people that, that probably are going to be important in my life. But prison kind of gave me a disconnect that is almost like wicked that I can like cut you and be done with you forever. I feel like you're the type of guy that doesn't really talk about feelings and, no, and no, prison. Listen, and I talk about prison because everyone wants to know. So I'll tell anybody okay. anything you want to hear. But like, I'm not an emotional dude. Like that, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I'm, like I'm not a jealous person. So why do you want to come do this? Because this is a this doesn't really seem like your thing. To like sit down and talk to someone. No, you know, because I I want I want people to realize that after you can still do something. If that you know so if we can if we have five people to say you know what there's a dude had a 20 year sentence did five years and he's now making a million dollars a year in real estate and it's not that hard i don't need a super high degree this is what we can do and learn that i don't care who comes on this anybody says prison was fun full of shit. it's not fun yeah you know what, I mean? what are the three biggest takeaways you want someone to to leave after listening to this interview with what do you want them to know? Well, I, I think one, the, the most important is that you can make it no matter what. The, you know, a discipline and dedication, if, if you want it, you can get it. Um, nobody can hold you back. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I was against so many things. You know, when I came home, just being a felon, being, they, everybody knew I was a drug dealer all around, that I fought so, there were so many challenges that didn't bother me. Because listen, I did it. Like, you have to, you have to eat what you did. You know, so if, if, if I sold drugs, I went to prison. I came home, I could have, there's two ways you can go. You can, recidivism is 81%. Or you can be now, uh, everybody that talks shit on me, I bought their house, right? So it, 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 anything's possible. You know, I'm wearing a $70,000 watch out of prison. That doesn't, that's more than some people make their whole year. Um, you know, so that, that's one thing. It's like nothing is out of touch if you, if you want it. You know, but you got to grind, like you got to starve. And that's the problem. People don't want to starve anymore. They want immediate gratification like we did when I was selling drugs. And they want to say, okay, listen, you can flip a house, you make a hundred grand. I want to be able to do it. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, I think there's like, a power in delayed gratification. A hundred percent. Yeah, and like you, it, it makes you appreciate shit. And, and that, yeah, hundred percent appreciate. So I appreciate what I have, but I don't care about it anymore. I'm at the point now where, and that, that's kind of like, my ex Stacy and I, we kind of broke up because I sold my house. I made $600,000 selling my house. I was only there a year, but it's 600,000. She was like, well, this could going to be our house. Well, we can buy another one. It's only a house to me. So, but that's the other thing that prison did. Prison made me colder too. Like, I don't care about this. I don't care about the cars, the land. I don't care about any of this. I got a condo on South beach. I don't care. And it, it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Um, be, but I think that's where prison, like you get to the point where you can't let that stuff bother you or you, you know, you'll be in your head forever. Mm. Nothing. I don't let anything affect me anymore. Like if I have a bad day, tomorrow's another day. What would you say to your teenage self if you could sit across from him now? You're smart enough to do it without selling drugs. You probably could have figured uh, out something. I, I definitely could have, but I think that, I think this, that the whole, that because I ran a drug game like a business, that it taught me so much about real life that if I walked in and started a company that didn't know all the bad things that really happened in life, it wouldn't be the same as now. You gotta go through that shit. You gotta, you, because, you know, like I said, I told my ex, but she was the one that she's never had to go through that. She thought she did because she married some dude that knocked her up when she, you know, she had a bad marriage. That's not, you still have people taking care of you. I run, if I got, if there's a problem, I gotta run to me. My mom runs to me, my dad runs, like I take care of everybody. That's real life experience. Right. And, and if prison get, gives you that too. And that's what I'm saying. If you don't know that struggle when you're sitting there, you're like, oh, you know, I eat this thing M&Ms or not. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. so it's, it's definitely that, you know, jail's no fun. Prison's no fun. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day. But it can give you the motivation, discipline to, to succeed in life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I, uh, back to that, 
I was on parole eight years. They wouldn't let me off parole. Either. I'm making a million dollars a year legally. And the, the the guy that was running the parole office wouldn't let me off parole early. I wouldn't let you off. Now, either. murderers, <laughs> were, no, that, that is. Guys that were murder charged were getting off, for, off of parole early. He wouldn't get me off. So, I, no problem. So, I had to ask. So, I, I was traveling to Vegas. You know, I'm traveling over. I bought an Airbnb in Vegas. And so, they, they, you know, parole is like, what well, you got to show a paycheck every two weeks. Okay, which one do you want? Yeah, I just made 20,000 flipping this. I made 40,000 flipping this house. You want to see that one? Because the more you make this whole year. So just leave me alone. Like, I don't, listen, I don't jaywalk now. Like, but he wouldn't let me off. So one of his, I owned a property and one of his officers went to see this girl and she parked on my grass. I got a car towed, a state car. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, I You're do still shit, the like, same asshole. I'm heart, still man. an asshole. <laughs> my, my, the prosecutor, bought a house i bought the house next to him filled with tenants oh man then I, the house that i just sold that i sold for a million he lived right across the street from that and i sold him mean 600 grand on the deal just you know i've only bought the house because he lived right there the kid that told on me and just before we end it the kid that told me rosetti in 2015 i bought three houses right next to him well you know he, what they say success is the best revenge that's, listen that's what it is you see flip I need my company flipping keys. <laughs> That's so, great. You know, you know, Devin, you... thanks for coming on the show today, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming Appreciate out you. to New Jersey. It's been a great uh, conversation today. We'll do it again. And, um, you know, really hope people get inspired uh, by your life story. You have a crazy story, yeah, man. It's, it's fun. Are you actually writing a book? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Book, yeah, that'll be out. Uh, we should be done it. I'm dedicated to my assistant. Um, Michelle or no, nah, Alexis, his girl Alexis. Oh, it's got to go to Michelle, but Mich listen, Alexis was there. She's a hustler, young girl. She uh, she actually helped me out a lot before it all went bad. Well, hopefully, no more FBI investigations no, or anything. I'm sure there is, but I'm not doing anything wrong. Just, they're wasting their time and their money. They awesome. can pick on me. Awesome, man. Thanks, man.